Check. Check, check. Are we here? I'm going to assume that we're here and we're live. Can anybody hear me? Anybody? Check, check. Testing. Testing. Well, I'm using a different microphone today, so it's going to obviously sound a little bit different. Uh, good morning, weirdos. This is me. Crazy old weird beard guy sounding very, very strange in the morning. Hey, Joey, how you doing? Hmm. Thank you. It's good to know that I am heard like sheep. <laughs> Arg. All right. Well, I know it sounds a little strange this morning, but uh, here I am. Uh, I'm coming to you live from the green room here at uh, Elsinore Brothers Studio. Of course, uh, Joey knows what this looks like uh, firsthand. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, happy Earth Day to everyone. Yay, Earth Day. Let's take care of the planet. Uh, so Earth Day came about about uh, 1970, I believe, was the first the first Earth Day. Uh, I'm going to turn off this fan here and see if it sounds a little bit better. Hey, how's that? That's a little bit better. All right. So, uh, yeah, since the first Earth Day, uh, it seems like we've just gone backwards, right? I mean, we keep every every 10, 20 years, we keep saying, by the end of this decade, we're going to have emissions under control and carbon neutral and this and that. And, the other. and it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. You can't go carbon neutral building electric cars that just create so much toxicity in the planet, right? I mean, uh, there's just no way. There's just there's just no freaking way, right? It's, so uh, that sounds kind of weird listening to my my voice in my headphones. So I'm going to take that off for a little while. Mm. So while Joey is here, I want to say good morning, Joey. Thanks you. Thank you so much for coming by. I can't believe it. If uh, if you haven't been paying attention, uh, Joey was a viewer for about a week, week and a half, and then went on vacation and just decided to come by and say hello. And um, wow, that was a surreal moment, was it not, Joey? Um, I, I was, I was like dumbfounded. I was found, I was found dumb. I, I really was. It was, it was crazy. It was uh, to have that kind of connection happen and then blossom, and then all of a sudden, there's there's someone right here in my own home saying, "Hey, yeah, it was it was pretty cool, Joey. It was uh, it was pretty intense." Um, I'm I'm still taken aback by the whole the whole situation. Uh it's good to good to hear from you. I'm glad you made it back home and back to work and everything safely. I hope you're not working yourself to death. Uh yeah, it'd be great to see you again if you get a chance to come back out this way. Let me know in ahead of time. We'll set something up, have some fun, get your place to stay. It'll be it'll be a freaking blast, dude. I'm telling you. It'll be a blast. As weird as it was this time. Next time, it'll just be totally, totally, just freaking totally, man. Um, so, yeah, uh, that was that was pretty intense. We just got off of 420. If anybody's familiar with 420, uh, that's marijuana day here in California and across most of the United States. I don't know why I'm talking like this this morning. I feel like being a DJ. Well, ladies and gentlemen, live from Elsino Studio. This is some crazy guy just talking shit. Uh, yeah, I have totally missed being here. I've had so much to say and so little opportunity to say it out in the real world. And so I am happy to be here, even if it's just for a short uh, a short period. Um, today, we're just here for today. Uh, I've got so much going on this week that I can't not, I, I just cannot commit to being here the next four days um but surprise uh i'm taking the show from four days a week to five days a week so i'll be monday through friday now yay uh i just need more time to go blah 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 that's it that's all there is to it uh oh looks like joey's probably going to be back in october Ooh, ooh, october october is a busy month for us uh yeah be sure to keep in touch and let me know what your tentative plans are, because I know my daughter has 
She has one or two concerts coming up in October, so things can get a little hectic around concert time. Uh, I think she's got When You Were Young, When We Were Young Festival, I think, in in October. Middle to the end of October, I think. But yeah, keep in touch. I will get those dates and nail down the dates for sure so we know not to have you here at the same time that I'm going to be having to leave town or something because that would be that would suck. Of course, uh, it would it would be really neat to have you out here. And uh, gosh, if we could have you out here at that time, I think we're going to Las Vegas for a couple of days during that period. Uh, yeah, so it should be it should be really really freaking heavy and bizarre. Uh, let me see what else did I want to talk about. Uh, my daughter Natalie. Uh, let me just show you my shirt here. Oh, you can't see my shirt. It's the shirt here, it says Copper Mountain College, because my daughter is graduating within a month. The end of the year, she is the end of this this school season. She is graduating uh, from Copper Mountain College out here in the desert. Uh, and she has got to be one of the, if not the most adult young person I know. She won't admit it. She won't admit to being a serious person but she really is she uh she takes the cake i mean that's that's all there is to it she's not only graduating from copper mountain college with her transfer diploma she's graduating with her general education diploma her 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 ge and uh associate of arts right or general education associate of arts now she's also graduating with a third liberal arts diploma which is like because she stays on top of things and communicates with people fellow students staff counselors she's constantly making appointments with her counselors kids if you're going to go to college talk to your counselors they're there to help they have done nothing but help my daughter get through this uh She's graduating with no less than three diplomas from one school. She's on her way in the fall to university where she's going to be for two years to get her bachelor's in um, psychology. Uh, I wonder why she's getting a bachelor's in psychology. Huh? Crazy old weird beard guy. Um, and then after that, we're hoping that with her liberal arts diploma degree, she can go from a bachelor in psychology and go after a bachelor degree in possibly art. She's really taken to writing. She has gotten so many comments from her professors about her writing. One of her professors used her writing, one of her papers, as an example to the rest of the class. And while everyone was supposed to get uh, two different copies of a paper from two different people in class, right? My daughter's paper was handed out to everybody as an example of what to do. Um, she's worked so closely with her professors on her projects that, that she has nothing left to do in some of her classes because her professors have said, change nothing. You, you need to change nothing about your, your work, your, your, you're done. You know, don't change a thing. Uh, and that's just wow. Uh, I keep telling her that just 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 write. Don't think about it. Just write. Write how you feel. Just put the pen down and just start fucking scribbling. Right. It will come to you. It, your, your writer's voice will emerge. And it has. And I'm so proud of her for that. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of her for her entire almost 20 years on this planet that she has just gone after it, after it, after it, after it. Um, and high praise to her mother. Um, all, all I can admit to is, is, you know, care and guidance, <laughs> you know, mom and, and, and daughter have pretty much done it all. Um, yeah. Freaking awesome. Check. Uh, yeah, I've I've been getting so so worked up lately about all of this college and university stuff. It's just it's maddening. 
Mm, 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 mm. Well, oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to warm that up. So let's see. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Bush, the local sign holder, actually came by the green room here in Elsinore Brothers Studio and hung out with me for a couple hours. Uh, it was freaking awesome. And that was another was a surreal moment, right? Here's a guy that, that I, I first noticed him standing out on the corner uh, in, in our town here holding a sign, you know? And I used to drive by and go, oh, my God, like, uh, what is wrong with this dude? Another one of them fanatics, you know? And uh, every time I drove by, he'd have a different sign up. And the signs kept, they weren't just religious or political. They were funny. They were uh, intuitive. They were, uh, they were uh, inspiring, right? So I, I used to drove, drive by going, Ugh. and then I started driving by going, yeah, what's he got this time? Oh, yeah, that's so cool. You know, uh, he was up a sign. Says, Some kid stole my sign, right? Uh, he told me a story about a guy who came out and he held up, he walked out in front of Bush while he was holding a sign. And he walked out and he stood out in front of Bush and held up a big sign that said, you know, something against what Bush was saying, right? And I won't go into the the the, the religio political aspect of it, but um so Bush, you know, didn't miss a beat, walked over to his car, wrote stuff down and came out with a bigger sign and went out there and held it. <laughs> uh, and Bush is the um, the master of ceremonies at the Landers Giant Rock Meeting Room open mic night. Uh, and he is, he's just, he's like one, uh, one of those characters that you think uh you're never gonna encounter you know you always encounter them at a far and you never think well i'm gonna actually meet this guy and talk to him and find out what he's about and uh, and i did and he's pretty freaking cool he's my kind of guy you know i'm i'm not wanting to get into religion and politics and stuff you know um because my my views are so different <laughs> from everyone else that I know. But it's neat to be able to talk to somebody about your different views, who has views completely different than your own, yet you seem to understand exactly where that person is coming from, right? And maybe it's just my own madness. I got to warm up this coffee here because uh, Eeyore is getting cold. Well, wow, so I'm wearing my long sleeve shirt here because window weather is just about over and I'm not going to be able to wear long sleeve shirts anymore. It's going to be too damn hot. It's going to warm up here this next month uh, extremely and it's going to be uh, it's going to be hot all the way through. Well, September. September, sometimes as, as late as October, it'll be freaking scorching. Uh, I used to enjoy August because it was my birthday month. Oh, August is miserable out here. It's like almost the hottest. It probably is the hottest month out here. It's just, it's freaking crazy hot. So if you're thinking about moving out here, Joey. And be aware that it's a hot, it's a hot son of a bitch, I'm telling you. Um, Arizona, uh, from 
from this side of the Sierras east all the way to Arizona. It's just scorching all the time. It's just a scorcher. Uh, yeah, 420 was great. Um, I, I, if, if you haven't checked, I did a little bit of live stuff, testing out a camera and testing out the live uh, cell signal because I, I need to find out, I need to map in town where the best hotspots are to uh, to grab onto some YouTube. Uh, and I'm, 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 I'm really, really excited about the whole live thing. So anyway, 420, I went over to the uh, Beatnik Lounge here in Joshua Tree with my wife. And we met up with Bush and David and David's wife, Kristen. Oh, David's wife, Kristen, is on her way to the Renaissance Fair for, I think, three weekends. Uh, she's got a booth and she'll be doing her artwork uh, out there, which is really, really cool because she deserves um she really deserves all the help that she can get because she's such a fantastic sketch artist uh and uh, uh what do you call painter uh just awesome awesome in fact she's working with my wife right now to do a uh, a portrait of uh, my wife's family um in inserting the people that are gone as well uh so it'll be it'll be pretty neat uh, looking forward to seeing that and 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 having her over at some point here on the show or um or at her place uh, on the show um this might be this next season of mornings might very well be the last uh only because there's so much going on that i find myself um uh, considering doing a a Monday through Friday live program in the evening where I can have more one-on-one -on -one with people. Uh, I can't get anyone here in the mornings uh, to come sit with me because it's so damn early. Uh, I can barely get people to come view because it's just so damn early. Uh, I'd like to do a couple of morning, a couple of hours in the morning and, a, and, a, and an hour in the evening. But logistically, we're just going to have to see how that plays out. Uh, I, I really do want to stay with the mornings because it's it really is uh, therapeutic for me. Um, you you won't believe what it was like this last week not being on. Yeah, uh, I felt empty and lonely, you know, it's weird. And then all of a sudden, it's last night and I'm dreading this morning thinking, oh, my God, what am I going to do? It's like I had those first those first show jitters that I had back when I started season one. Um, and even this morning when the alarm went off, the alarm went off and I snoozed it. And I'm thinking, why, why the fuck am I getting up so goddamn? And then it was like. Seven minutes later, before the snooze went off again, I was like, "Oh shit, it's Monday. I'm I'm going on the I'm going on TV." Uh, and I got up and 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 I never get up and take a shower, but I actually got up and took a shower this morning because I wanted to wake up and be alive. Uh, but man, uh, being away from this for that long, I have been accomplishing stuff. I've been really really busy. Uh, I didn't want to just take the time off and then flounder um, because that's what I do best. It's just kind of, uh, just do it later, man. I'm going to procrastinate. I'm like a procrastinator. You know, I'm like totally excellent. Uh, yeah. You got it, got it, got it. But uh, yeah, not being here was, was, was really, really weird. Now, I've been really, really busy. So... Uh, have I missed it? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, did I give my time? Did I give myself time to really, really miss it? No, not really. I just kept putting my head down and staying busy. This is only the third time that I've opened up this laptop in the last week and a half. Uh, and I knew mainly because if I opened it up, 
and I started getting into a program or a video or something, I would just lose myself. And I've had way too much going on to think about doing that. Um, I would love, I'm only using a little USB webcam, so I can't really pick it up and show you what's going on. Uh, just, uh, just know that I've been really, really busy and my mobile live unit, which is a big cabinet that I'm building portable that, that I can wheel and stick into my van and then pull out of my van and park somewhere and do a whole four camera live deal. Or I can leave it in my van and run cameras out of my van and do a really, really mobile live. Um, so my plan is not just to go live for open mic once a week, but to try to go live Friday nights as well. So if I can do Monday night and then Monday through Friday in the mornings and then Friday night. Uh, and then the occasional going out and doing some live stuff um, on on the weekends. Uh, I think that's probably going to do me for a little while. But uh, I get bored really easily with stuff. Not that I'm bored with the morning show because I'm not. This this is really, really where it's at for me. I mean, uh, if I had the energy I had 10 or 15 years ago, yeah, I would probably be on this thing a lot more and you'd see a lot more videos popping up. But I'm just, I'm always too wiped out, you know? Uh, but this mobile unit has really got me thinking outside the box, right? Um, being able to go live elsewhere on my phone. Eh, you know, being able to sit here and do my multi-camera live stuff. Yeah, you know, it's it's okay. It's fun. It's interesting. It's, it's uh, uh, technically challenging and everything. But it's not it's not the end all to my creativity. I've got to have more. And I think if I can now take this show on the road, so to speak. It's going it, to it, it's going to open up a whole new world of experience, right? Uh, a whole new. Uh, in, a whole new area of live stuff. Uh, so, yeah, Beatnik was fun. I did a little bit of live there, left my card. Hopefully I'll. I'll get some kind of back and forth. I, you know, the Beatnik Lounge is is great. It's it's a uh, it's inviting. It's it's a warm, cozy place. But there's not much going on, you know. And what they do got going on eh, is kind of unorganized. At the you know, without sounding you know, too uh, spoiled. It is just it's unorganized. It needs more going on. Um, I mean, it was like I was expecting to see a bunch of stuff going on there, and it was a couple of old guys talking about pot and my friends playing a little bit of music, and that was pretty much it. And then it started getting going a little bit, and then it was over. Uh, so I think had there been a little more planning uh, involved, it would have it would have been a better deal. Now there was other stuff going on all over town. Uh, places where you could go and, and uh, sign up for raffles and, and get free pipes and stuff. But one place was giving away free joints and edibles and stuff uh, to the uh, to the tourists because uh, you know we're all just tourists on this planet, you know. Jelly, mm. jelly. Oh, yeah, Mark, Anthony, if you're watching, my uh, brother-in-law down there in Escondido. Uh, Natalie's ready to come down and visit as soon as she's on summer break, right? She's coming down, hanging out. Wants to come down and party, do that party thing. Um, sheesh, good. She needs to get out and do something. Man, the kid, all she ever does is schoolwork. I'm proud of her, but. I really wanted to get out and have fun and socialize too. It's important, you know. You, you do a lot of growing when you're out in the world, hanging out with people and socializing, and and forced to interact. You know, it's 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 really really cool. Uh, let's see anything else on my list. List. 
Oh, yeah. Movies. So, uh, movies are going to be interesting because next season, next week, uh, I want to start bringing you movies on Monday. Uh, and there'll be anything from like uh, Night of the Living Dead, George A. Romero, right? Now, that's one that we can watch because it is a free use film. It's a copyright free deal where anybody can play it, right? But mainly, I think we're going to be looking at a lot of school films, stuff that we would have seen in school as kids. Uh, for me, it was usually Mondays or Fridays. Mondays or Fridays were usually the film days. Um, Mondays because the the teacher was hungover, right? Didn't want to have to think about anything. Or Fridays because the teachers had already checked out on the weekend and was like, you know, fuck this. I just want to go, you know, here, watch a movie while I sit here and look at my brochure for the weekend. Uh, and in Elsinore, in my hometown, the teachers were like that. I was like, they were... They were just like us. They wanted out. They wanted to go on summer vacation. They wanted to leave town and go to Hawaii or wherever it is, Mexico or Cancun, wherever they went on vacation for the summer. Uh, and a lot of the teachers, they their vacation in the summer was working a summer job, right? Um, you know, the cashier at uh, the freaking Alamo market for the summer because, you know, you don't make a lot being a teacher. But it was pretty cool having grown up in that small town and knowing pretty much all of the teachers and the teachers knowing you and knowing your parents and everybody kind of knowing each other, you know, that's what I miss about small towns, you know, where you could say, Hey, teach, we're having a party this weekend. You know, Mr. Castanon from uh, Ortega high school, Mr. Castanon, he was really cool. He was a guy that would invite you over to his house to do yard work and stuff. And then, you know, throw out some sandwiches and just a really cool dude. Uh, most of the teachers back then were were really, really swell guys, really cool people. Uh, did the staff as well uh, back in the uh, in the eighties. Came a need for security on campuses, right? And so we started seeing these these campus security guys walking around with walkie talkies and and big keychains, you know, big ring filled with keys and. And uh, busting kids for smoking and trying to leave. And and uh, some of those guys were just dicks, you know. But some of those guys were really cool, you know. Richie Rabb and Tony Colors. And uh, uh, there were just a, a whole bunch of, of really cool. But there were also some assholes like uh, Dale. Dale was a uh, a security guy at the high school who had, a few years before I got there, had busted my brother for selling pot on campus right uh and he used to bring a big duffel bag with all of his crap in it and then inside that bag of crap there were usually a few eighths a few quarters of bud and he was selling weed uh usually for mom and dad trying to make ends meet um but he got he got popped once and got expelled uh and that same security guy in my ninth grade year came after me and tried to get me busted and uh, I was out in the uh, baseball field in the dugout, hanging out with a couple of people, um, mainly a girl that I was uh, that I was sweet on. So we went out there to hang out, me and a girl. And then this other guy showed up just before Dale showed up. And Dale showed up just as I was chewing on this. Uh, I had these little these little plastic filters. I was trying to quit smoking cigarettes, right? So I was chewing on these little plastic swiss or sweet filters right and uh and i had bought a pack and i would just pop the the cigar out and just have that little filter in my mouth right so i was out there chewing on this this filter uh and it's just a little plastic nub thing it's not even a filter and uh so i saw him come inside so you know i chucked it out on the ground well he walked up picked up a cigarette butt and said you're coming with me and i said oh that's not mine he says bookie this is yours and so I picked up the thing and I said, no, this is mine. That's bullshit. And he said, no, you're coming with me. So he took me to the office um, and wrote me up, busted me, and had me expelled. Or not expelled, but had me suspended, removed from campus for three days, right? Well, I went home. At this time, I wasn't living at home. I was living with my friend Chris's 
Chris at his house and his mother, who was a uh, uh, home study Christian school teacher, was very upset because she knew that I wasn't smoking cigarettes. And she was very upset that they had just, you know, decided to, to fuck me over. So she wanted to go to the campus and stand up for me, right? Uh, and uh, also my mother decided that she wanted to be involved. I don't know how she popped up and decided that she wanted to get involved in this, but all of a sudden she was there. And uh, so I took my mother and my second mother, Chris's mom, uh, and I had about five or six mothers in town because I was homeless and kind of a couch jumper at 15. Uh, and so we're in the office talking to the uh, to the, the dean of students and the vice principal and Dale standing in the doorway holding a Pepsi, right? Just being a goon. Um, and he, every time he opened his mouth, he would just sputter out you know, uh, moronic nonsense, right? Because the guy was not a high school graduate, yet he was he was allowed to be around high school students, right? And that was one of the things that that uh, Janet, my friend's mother, uh, picked up on. And she picked up on his language. She picked up on his people skills. She picked up on the fact that he wasn't a high school student, that he had poor, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, poor hygiene, um, I mean, she just nitpicked everything about this guy. He dressed, he dressed dirty and unprofessionally and unkept. He had, he had bad breath. He smelled like cigarettes and alcohol. I mean, she just tore into this guy and his language. She went after his language. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a teacher. And to have this kind of influence around, around kids is, you know, and she, she got him, she got him fired. She got his ass fired. Uh, and I was allowed to return to school until I got kicked out again later. Um, but I thought it was so great that, that this, this dumb son of a bitch who had tried so hard to go after me after having gotten my, and he knew what he was doing. He knew who I was. He knew why he was going after me. He was intentionally trying to get me busted and he couldn't do it. So he picked the easiest, stupidest little thing and blamed a cigarette butt on me. Right. So it's like, all right, you're done. And he was, he wound up out at Paris high school. Um, and was none too popular there either because they were referred to as narcs because they were, they were just asshole, um, asshole law enforcers, right? Rule, rule keepers. They were dicks. Most of them. Mm. I got to warm this up again. There you go. Yeah, I'm telling you, I was not ready for this morning. I was not. The alarm went off, and I was like, "What the hell is all this about?" And then I was, <laughs> I'm laying there listening to the dog click, click, clicker to the floor, right? And he like he went out to go to the bathroom, and then came back in, and he just clicks around the floor because he he has trouble jumping up. He thinks about it too much. If he just jumps straight up, he's got no problem. But he's like jump. Jump, 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 jump. Because he thinks about it. He's like, oh, man, I'm not going to make it. Oh, man, I'm not going to make it. Oh, man, I'm not going to make it. And you can literally watch it in his eyes when he backs up and then runs and then backs up and then runs and then backs. And it's just freaking hilarious. He gets like, just jump up. If there was food up here, you'd be up here like that. He wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. But, man, I did not want to get up. I did not. I was up till after midnight in here screwing around working on this cabinet and boy did i get some work done on it last night uh, i didn't get shit done on it yesterday because we worked and then we had to go to the store and it was like oh oh you never want to go to walmart and then try to do anything afterwards it's like every day i i wind up going out to like no less than two or three stores every freaking day 
I mean, one day last week, I went out to Walmart and Home Depot three times, three times in one day looking for parts for my box, for my my live kit here. Uh, and yesterday was no different. I went around to four different stores yesterday looking for uh, a thin rubber mat to use uh, as a surface for my editing area because I want something soft for my components to sit on and grab onto so when I push on a button it doesn't just slide right so I decided to go with a yoga mat I found a really nice thin black really groovy textured uh, yoga mat that uh, I'm cutting up into individual pieces to fit into drawers and on top of things and surfaces so that uh, my components have something to hold on to, right? So last night I installed the top rubber mat uh, on on the inside top of my, my unit uh, and drilled a hole. I got a hole for cords to come out. I've got another, uh, I put an outlet uh, two plug outlet on the top so I can plug my phone in. I installed the TV monitor with a backlight behind it. Uh, it's just, oh, it's, it's, I can't wait to show you guys pictures of this. Uh, but not until next week. It's not quite ready yet. And I want to show it when it's ready. It'll be ready this week so that hopefully next week I'll be taking it with me on my Monday Night Live deal to open mic. That's going to be uh, pretty awesome. Pretty much why I didn't set up anything this morning. I've only got this this webcam here and this little microphone, uh, and that's it. That's all I'm doing today because I want to I want to keep everything else geared towards that whole live thing. And once I get it all set up, then I can take my cameras out, stack them up, plug everything in, and go live within ten or fifteen minutes and then break everything down and be packed up and in the van within 10 or 15 minutes, right? Uh, it's going to make for an easier Monday night uh, live. It's going to make it's going to make it way easier to go from Monday night to Tuesday morning or from Monday morning to Monday night or from Friday morning to Friday night. You know, I'll need to be able to get done with the show in the morning, fold everything up into the box, and have that box ready and waiting so that when I get up in the evening to go out, it's just me and that box in the van. Uh, probably a couple of duffel bags, cables, tripods. Uh, it is a really big undertaking. Uh, if, if I was just doing the phone, you know, anybody can fucking do that. Anybody can do just a phone. You know, I've done that already. I've, I've enjoyed that. It's fun. <clears throat> It's okay for concerts where you're at the forum, right? And all you're going to get is one view. That that's different. If I'm locally at an open mic and I can get up and move around and I can get on stage, off stage, left, right, forward, back, I can get everywhere, right? Well, why can't I put cameras in these places then? Well, you can. You can do it, boy. Get up and do it. So, yeah. I can, so I am, and uh, and I'm really, really excited about it. You know, um, yeah, yeah, like for sure. So yeah, Mondays, Mondays, I want to bring you some kind of visual, some kind of movie, right? And then we can talk about it, and I'll take suggestions and. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll have to do a lot of research to find movies that we can watch here and not get in trouble with YouTube over, which means I've got to I've got to find it. I've got to put whatever I need to do around it as a video, create the video that's going to be uploaded to my channel and then upload it to my channel as a private video, do all of the copyright checks on it and let it sit there and ferment for a week and see what happens to it, because even if it's private. They will still be running checks on it and let me know, hey, you're going to need to yank this. Uh, so I'll every week I'll be uploading the week, the, the previous, the, 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 the upcoming week's show. Uh, and then uh, I want to do the same thing with TV. 
on Tuesdays, I want to do some kind of TV stuff, old news broadcasts, commercials, shows that we we don't see anymore. Um, you know, in, interviews with with past um, cast members of different shows. Uh, things that we can watch without getting in trouble over. Uh, of course, we're going to stay with uh, old time radio Wednesdays. Uh, I really enjoy listening to those uh, radio shows anew with with uh, new friends. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Uh, Thursdays, we're going to be doing like a throwback. All right. And I think Thursdays, I'll try to come up with things from my past that we can discuss. Um, my past artwork, my past song lyrics, um, past friends, people I've I've known, uh, places I've lived, things that I've done, things that have done me. Uh, yeah, we'll just and then with that, I'll be able to bring a lot of little tidbits, slideshows, old family movies. Uh, you know, whatever I can dig up from my own past and share with you. That's pretty much what Thursdays is going to be. Now, Fridays, Fridays, I'm thinking on just doing past concerts, right? And what I'll do is I'll dig up concert footage, video, or audio, uh, recordings of concerts that i've been to okay uh, now i've been to a few grateful dead shows so i know that grateful dead is something that i can for the most part uh, share with you on youtube here and i've already created one grateful dead uh music video and it's basically just audio but it's like it's like almost three hours long really i mean it's it's the whole concert minus one song that was just unavailable right so i've got this this video of a grateful dead concert that's just audio with some visuals right but it's uh it's long right i i took the individual songs on a list right and then took all of those audio tracks and edited them together in one long deal and every time i think about that show i totally remember everything about that that one show in vegas that i that keeps coming to mind uh sam boyd stadium spring of 95 and it was um it was a phenomenal show it was a um, i got to go to the the last night i was may 21st um with my friend Andy, who invited me, um, promised that he'd get me in on the last night. You know, he's like, what night do you want to go on? Man? And I'm like, the last night, you know, I don't want to, you know, go to the first night and then sit. You know, I'd rather sit for a couple of days and, and build up to the last night. Uh, and so they would all go into the show and me and I think it was me and Cassie, Cassie Lucas, um, before she was Cassie Lucas. Uh, she and I hung out at, in the station wagon and sold drinks and cigarettes and stuff to make some some money. Uh, and I think we ate some mushrooms too. But uh, yeah, that was neat. Every every show that I went to with with Andrew uh, and his his old lady was uh, one of those things where it was like, yeah, I'll go on on the last night, Sunday night. Yeah, put me on Sunday night and. And then he had a couple of days to try to get me a ticket, right? Because I was like, I don't know what the fuck to do. And he's out there like, yeah, tickets, tickets, ticket, yeah, give me a ticket, man. Uh, he was really, he was really into the the whole dead scene. I mean, he followed the dead all the way to the East Coast. Their last year, uh, he ended that that summer uh, tour and came back to California, uh, like right about the time that Jerry died. I mean, it was really, really heavy. <laughs> really, really heavy. Um, but yeah, Grateful Dead. 
so you know fridays is kind of a eh, don't know what we're going to do on friday sometimes you know i i'm i'm thinking that i may actually be able to get somebody over here at like six and six or seven in the morning and actually have a guest on the morning show it would be somebody like dave or bush or somebody who's who has a normal tendency to get up early and have nothing to do right um so it's possible more than likely it's going to be me in the van up on a flat top somewhere with a, a, a rug on the ground and a chair and a table and you know that might wind up being the occasional friday morning show where you know i'll i'll load up everything into the van the night before and then park the van on a hill somewhere and sit in my van and open up the gear and do a show from my van out in the middle of nowhere and be able to take a camera out and mill around and have cameras set up so you can see the sunrise and you can see the, the area uh it should be a lot of fun i'm really trying to 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 expand my horizons further than uh than i would normally see right uh so what can i do to mix this up change this up a little bit um and that's just do something different you know just do something different. i was talking to bush the other day and he was saying that he doesn't get high anymore and i said dude you're smoking pot right now and he's like no man i don't get high anymore it's just it doesn't really affect me and i told him man that's i, I get the same fucking issue man because i've been smoking since i was 15 years old right and i'm 55. so let's see that's um that's a lot of years right so i'm i'm telling him, well you got to mix it up a minute do you change the pot that you smoke one strain or do you change it up because i'm constantly changing from from indica to sativa and bouncing around in between the difference the different uh you know percentages of 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 mix the different thc levels the different turpin levels i mean if you keep changing your your weed then you're not going to get uh burned out on one thing you're not going to get that tolerance build up right uh and so i'm like well if you're if you're doing that what about how you smoke it how how, how do you do you always use that same device change that do something different i'm always i mean i just got a new pipe on 420 old guy was giving out pipes and seeds right so i took got me a pipe uh but i told him you know what change the way you smoke smoke a joint smoke a one hitter do use a bong use a different pipe do and he's like yeah maybe that's it you know and i'm hoping that helped because it helps me you know uh lately i've been i've been using a lot of this uh this garlic grove and it is a sativa dominant hybrid uh and it is a mind stimulated body relaxed and i call this shit speed weed because it cranks me up it gets me pumped right usually i'll smoke a little weed and i'll want to lay back and chill out you know and and maybe do something creative right and i'll take a couple of hits of this weed and then a couple of hours later i'm like Fuck, man, I got to sit down. I've been going at it, man. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll take a hit, you know, and I'll take a hit to relax and then boom, I'm up again. So I decided to get more of that during this period of uh, extreme activity in my life. Because while insomnia is good, it doesn't do the job. Not lately, anyway. And lately, insomnia has taken the back seat to freaking just exhaustedness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i digress oh yeah well i'm i'm really bummed joey if you're still there i'm bummed that you didn't get to meet my daughter um yeah she of course she was I'm assuming she was probably asleep when you were here because she's, you know, always up late doing homework for college. But yeah, you guys would have, you guys would have hit it off. She's, she's a young person too. Uh, she's almost 20. Uh, and it was really cool to find out that, yeah, cool. It was really cool to find out that you're, that you're so young, you know, um, you know, cause I, 
it's easy for me to to talk to people my own age, right? Uh, there's like a million of us out there. Um, but it's always the same old, you know, usually when you talk to somebody my age, they're they're disgruntled, they're they're upset about the way things are, and they just want to bitch and complain and stuff. And I'm looking for the goodness, you know, I'm looking for, hey, you know, yeah, there's a bunch of old crusty fucks like like me out there, but but I want to try something new, you know, I want to meet new people, do new things, have new experiences, you know, live life. Um yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, traveling the world and you know, uh, trying every single kind of food that there is, but that would that would be neat, but uh, not on my budget. Not on my budget. No way, buddy. Ah, mm -mm -mm. uh, yeah. Yeah, Joey, if you're out here for, a, you know, like a week or so, I mean, shit. There's just so much to do. I mean, in a, it'd take you a couple of days just to kind of drive around and see all of the cool little weird things that are out here in the fucking desert. And we were just talking the other day uh, on 420. Uh, and and David was mentioning, well, I've never seen that. I've, I've never been, you know, been living out here my whole life, and I've never been out there to see that. And that's been out there for years. And it's like, dude, <laughs> we gotta we gotta go on a little sightseeing trip. You know, we're gonna go out and pretend like we're tourists because <laughs> there's a lot to see. I mean, I don't know. Did you guys have a chance to drive through the park? Uh, because oh, that's right. You sent me pictures. You did. You did go through the park. Now, that is a really neat place, but uh, it's even neater if you like park and take a walk out to like Keys Ranch or the uh, there's actually water out there. There's a little lake. Right. Uh, and that's really cool to, to go explore. Uh, even here in town, if you just park in town and just walk down one side of the highway through town and then cross over and walk the other side of the highway through town. You can stay busy the whole freaking day, especially on the weekend, especially if it's like one of those weekends where there's like everything going on. Uh, there's so much to do. Uh, in the summer, there is a night market, right? And it's like the whole town is jumping like at 10, 11 o'clock at night. I'm sitting here in my bedroom. And I got to close the window because of the sound of town. You know, you got two, three, four different places with live music and the drum beats and the bass coming over the waves of the air. Just like, dude, fucking party town. And it's like that almost every weekend. And on the big weekends, it's just crazy. Like when uh, dikes on bikes come through town and the whole town fills up with bikers. It's uh, it's it's freaking crazy, you know, or on uh, Labor Day or Memorial weekends. Uh, you cannot find a place to stay. You cannot find a, a seat at a restaurant. Uh, you can't find parking in town. It's it's crazy. It's just absolutely fucking nuts. I think I want more coffee, guys. Mm -hmm. I think I do. I think I do. I do wack a do. I do wack a do. Speaking of do wack a do, uh, I've been. I spent uh, the the weekend after uh, I finished off season two, working on the uh, opening and closing sequences for season three because season three i'm actually going to be able to use graphics and music and doing do an opening credits and a closing credits for my morning show right i mean who thunk right i can do graphics now so i created an opening with theme music and credits and all of that and fun graphics and then put together an end uh and then I also put, pardon me, I also put together uh, the Grateful Dead video, uh, but I'm also going to be putting together the the Wednesday old-time radio shows 
uh, the, the movie Mondays, the, the TV Tuesdays. So every day we're going to have some kind of um, some kind of entertainment. Um, and it won't just be me. So we'll have more to talk about. We'll play a movie and then we'll talk about it. We'll play some TV, some old commercials, a news broadcast or something, an old time radio show, a concert. We'll look through some slides, some videos. Uh, and it's going to keep me really, really busy. I mean, I'm going to be every day I get through with the show. I'm going to be creating graphics and videos and audio for the following week's episode. Right. So Monday we do movies. Monday afternoon, I create the next movie sequence for the following Monday, and I upload it privately so that it can go through its checks, right? And then I do Tuesday show. Tuesday, we do TV. So I share the TV stuff. And then after the show, I'll create the TV stuff for the following week, and I'll upload it privately, and it'll do its checks. And I'm thinking that by doing it systematically like this, I should have a better chance of bringing you stuff uh, that we can enjoy without, you know, fear of reprisal because we don't want to get in trouble through YouTube. I don't want to get canceled because of some stupid mistake. Uh, I've already made stupid mistakes. So, yeah. Uh, I think of this week, I'm going to take some YouTube refresher courses on rules and regulations and stuff and try to get my my hits against me taken away. And that'd be cool because I, I, you know, I want to be here doing this. Uh, I want to be here doing videos and sharing music uh, and sharing my life and bringing you the lives of other people who I find really, really interesting. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, this has been such a really, really crazy few months. I mean, when I started this morning thing, uh, I thought it was, I thought it was going to be a kind of a flubbery, a flop, you know, and it was going to be a lot of, of just uh, dead air. And then I thought it was just going to be a lot of me, you know, venting about shit. Damn it, I'm pissed off. Get off of my lawn, you little bastards. Uh, and it, it became more than that. You know, and I'm I'm real happy about that. But you know, what I'm it, it's gotta be it's gotta be different. There's gotta be something something more, you know. So yeah, this is this is gonna get uh this is gonna get real interesting to say the least. My mornings may be cut down to a couple of hours so that I have the time to to go to work. And to get some rest so that I can be available for evening stuff. Um, I've, I've created this mobile setup so that I can go from my house to my van and to a mobile location within a few minutes. I should be able to break everything down in here within 10 or 15 minutes and have it in the van and set up somewhere else within 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and that's going to that's going to change. That's going to change things like exponentially. Uh, yeah. So Mondays, uh, not only will we be looking at and viewing uh, some kind of movie together, but we'll also be talking about movies. Uh, movies that you've seen, movies that I've seen, movies that we've talked about together and have decided, all right, well, this week we're going to watch this movie. You get a chance to watch this movie and we'll come back and we'll talk about it on Monday, right? Because weekend is when we usually watch a movie uh, if we don't go out. If, if we're for somebody who does go out on the weekends, then it's usually like during the week, we'll put on a movie middle of the week, you know, because I'm bored. I want to watch a movie. Uh, so I like to watch new movies, but the movies that the new movies that I watch are older movies. Right. I will watch a movie new to me, something that's been around for decades, but I just haven't had a chance to see it yet. Uh, so over the weekend, uh, I sat out here by myself and watched uh, Mickey and Maud. 
Mickey and Maud starring Dudley Moore and uh oh what's her name oh her name was right on the top of my head Amy Irving all right so you know Dudley Moore right from Arthur ah the drunk the drunk guy him and Liza Minnelli uh great fucking movie um uh, Arthur Two on the Rocks, another great movie. Uh, Ar- Dudley Moore is a really funny, funny guy. He got his start in comedy, British comedy in England in the 1960s, working with a group of a uh, bunch of it's like a uh, like a Monty Python's type group uh, of guys. In fact, then he then he become part of Monty Python stuff and was in a few of their. Th- I don't remember. Hit me up if anybody remembers Monty Python and Dudley Moore. So Dudley Moore and Amy Irving. Amy Irving was, okay, Carrie, the movie Carrie with Sissy Spacek, a Brian De Palma movie, okay? So Amy Irving played the girl who gave up her boyfriend to Carrie for the prom, right? Uh, That boyfriend was William Catt, the greatest American hero, The, uh, the guy from House that movie house, not the TV show. Um, So Amy Irving, a really, really unusual female actor. Uh, At least I find her kind of off. She's a little off kilter. He's got uh, a very, very beautiful face. And at the same time, it's excruciating, right? Uh, Amy Irving, not to be confused with Amy Madigan, right, the actress, or um, Amy Heckerling, right, the director of uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. But Amy Irving, very, very, uh, there was another movie oh, that she was in that I was thinking about. Uh, it'll come to me. So Mickey and Maude, um, Dudley Moore's <clears throat> Dudley Moore is married to a woman who's about to become a judge, thinks more about her career. After 10 years of marriage, she still doesn't want to commit to having children. And on a fluke, just on a whim, he winds up bedding this young girl, uh, a cellist, and gets her pregnant. At the same time, finds out that his wife just got pregnant, right? So now he's juggling two pregnant women. And he can't tell his wife because he's afraid of her health and she might have another miscarriage. He can't tell the young girl that, that, you know, that he hasn't divorced his wife because he's afraid that she's, you know, just going to lose it. So he tells the girl that he's divorced and they get married. He tells his wife nothing and continues to be a supportive husband and father. Right. Uh, It's a Blake Edwards film. Blake Edwards, uh, he did a lot of great comedy. He did Victor Victoria with uh, Julie Andrews, his wife, Julie Andrews, uh, and James Garner. Um, S.O.B., one of my favorite Blake Edwards films, uh, S.O.B., a movie about a girl, uh, an actress in Hollywood who's just kind of hit the the, the, hit a wall and she can't really make it, you know, and she just, they decide that during this movie, she's going to show her breasts, right? And that's going to bring her career back to life. Uh, and Julie Andrews actually shows her breasts in this movie. So if you've ever seen Mary Poppins and you want to get a, a glimpse at Mary Poppins rack, check out SOB. Uh, and she's got a great rack. She has a very, very beautiful body, uh, to say the least. And she's an older woman when she when she showed her breasts in this movie. Uh, and she literally had the breasts of a of a, a 20 year old. I mean, come on. Great. Uh, but yeah. Um, now, uh, what's his face? Uh, boy, names just go in and out of my head so quick. But uh, so, yeah, the guy who did uh, Victor Victoria and SOB, uh, he also did this Mickey and Maude. He did a bunch of weird movies. Didn't he do 10? I believe Blake Edwards did 10 and another Dudley Moore 
movie with Julie Andrews. He he really did a lot with his wife Julie Andrews, and he did a lot with with uh, Dudley Moore, Blake Edwards. Blake Edwards got his start writing old time radio shows back in the forties and fifties. He was responsible for. Oh, I think he was re responsible for Richard Diamond or The Singing Detective. I mean, he really, uh, he was all over the place. He was like uh, Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks was heavy into radio and then TV and wrote a lot of TV. Before we even saw Mel Brooks, we had heard his jokes like a million fucking times. Uh, so yeah, Blake Edwards. Uh, if you get a chance to watch anything that Blake Edwards wrote or directed or produced, check it out. Uh, it's a different, it's a different kind of humor. You watch all of his movies, and you you can't compare his movies to anyone else because they're Blake Edwards movies, right? Uh, it's like Brian De Palma. Brian De Palma has the same quality of being different than everyone else in that in that period right um brian de palma responsible for carrie bringing the movie Car carrie to life uh, carrie was a a novel written by stephen king and uh adapted for the for the screen uh, and i can't remember who wrote the screenplay might have been brian de palma but brian de palma once again he wanted to go after new faces he wanted talent but he wanted you know he wanted some he wanted some just like george lucas george lucas was really famous in the 70s for wanting unknowns right which is why he cast a lot of those people in american graffiti that we saw uh because they were unknowns the only really one that was known uh in american graffiti was ron howard even though everyone else in the movie had done a little bit of something, uh, like even uh, Cindy Williams, who played Shirley in Laverne and Shirley, she was in this, which is kind of funny because they both went on to do Happy Days in Laverne and Shirley, right? Uh, but, you know, Shirley, uh, Cindy Williams had already done uh, a movie that she'd gotten a lot of praise for. I can't remember the title of it. Um, but it was like one of those weird uh, political anti-movement kind of weird hippie flicks, right? Uh, but George Lucas like Brian De Palma, liked to cast a lot of unknowns. In fact, when he was, after he'd done American Graffiti, and he was did American Graffiti to get money together so that he could do uh, Star Wars. And when he was casting for Star Wars, at the same time, Brian De Palma was casting for Carrie. And they said, okay, well, why don't we just pool our resources and have a joint casting call and we'll bring people in and we'll both take a look at them and we'll decide who wants to use who for what right um and harrison ford almost did not make it into star wars because he had already done american graffiti and george lucas was hell-bent on using unknowns and uh and he didn't he didn't want to have people in it that were he wanted to have you know he wanted it to be new and different and and people that you've never seen before doing things that you've never seen before right and uh but he kept he kept he and uh and harrison ford were good friends and he kept harrison ford around during these interviews and these screen tests because he needed someone to read with the actors, right? So he kept bringing him in to read with these actors. And he just, he he kept nailing the part. And he wound up uh, getting the part of Han Solo just because, I, I think it was just out of necessity, he could not find someone to fill the part as good as the guy who was reading it with the, the other actors, right? I mean, it could have been, it, there could have been so many 
I mean, it could have been, you know, uh, Kurt Russell could have been Han Solo. Uh, you know, there were so many, so many things that have, could have gone so different. You know, we, we could have seen, uh, we could have seen Carrie Fisher as uh, the Amy Irving part in Carrie, right? I mean, it's possible that Amy Irving could have been Princess Leia. Or PJ Souls, you know, being being uh, Princess Leia. You never know. Things could have turned out really, really different. But I like I like the idea that they that they worked together to come up with the the actors for their two totally different movies, right? Completely, completely different. Mm. Well, that coffee is cold, and I'm going to have to get some more. Because it's coffee time. I'll be right back. Don't nobody go nowhere. She can probably hear me because that microphone is so damn good. <laughs> yeah. Where doggy? Look at that there. All right, sun is coming up. It's uh no wedgie, no wedgie. Ah. It's uh pretty soon I'm gonna be getting up at five and the sun's gonna be poking its freaking eyeballs at me. Sheesh. Pretty soon it's gonna be it's gonna be hotter than than hell before the sun even comes up. Uh no shit. No shit. I mean, I may have to stop mornings because you can't hear me talking with this air conditioner cranked on, right? And it's going to be like that. I mean, already we used to sleep with the air conditioner on. I mean, the, with the windows open last week. Last week, the windows open, fan on. This week, window closed, air conditioner on, right? Just like that. Um, it's like a window weather lasted for like two or three weeks and that was it over done now it's it's cranking on the ac 24 fucking seven which just means i gotta i gotta hook up this uh swamp cooler this uh evaporative cooler uh, because they work great in the uh in the desert unless it's human dude joey if you need to sleep soon, go to sleep. You got to work, man. You got life. Do it, man. Go to sleep. Yeah, man. Grab, go to go to my YouTube channel and put on one of those old-time radio shows. Those used to just put me right to sleep. Put on a little X-1. Listen to some, some psychotic dude messing with aliens or something. That'll be cool. Uh, but yeah, I won't be here tomorrow, nor will I be here the rest of the week. Uh, I will be off continuing to work on my live mobile setup. Uh, I will be putting my studio back together uh, and I will be working on graphics and uh, episodes, uh, movies, TVs, radio shows, that kind of stuff, getting stuff ready for um, the, the beginning of uh, season three uh, while also getting things ready to do um at least one or more um 
nighttime live deals. Now, if it's something happening just about anywhere, I should be able to have everything set up in my van, park somewhere and run a couple of cameras in and just stay in my van or have somebody with a camera, you know, uh, or set everything up in my van and then go out with the camera. So there's the, the possibilities are just astronomical at this point. Uh, things are just going crazy. Uh, so, I, yeah, I won't be here the rest of the week. Uh, I've got a dentist appointment tomorrow that I tried to set up for last week. And I went, they're like, well, you got to go back and see this guy. So I got to go tomorrow, see the dentist, uh, probably get a tooth yanked, and then work on getting things ready for Monday. Right. Uh, and I, so I don't want to commit not knowing what's going to happen with the dentist, not knowing what's going to happen uh, with the rest of the week's schedule. Uh, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to commit to anything this week. I'm going to be taking the show to five days a week. And um, and I'll be going live um, at least one or two nights a week. So I was like, yeah, I'll take a week off. Uh, I need time to prepare. Had I not taken this last week off, I wouldn't be anywhere near uh, Monday night live mobile status at all. Uh, as it is tonight, I'm just going to be taking this setup. I'm going to be taking this microphone, this laptop, and that camera. And that's it. That's tonight. Mainly because I just want to tech. I want to check speed. I want to check, uh, you know, a service. Uh, I want to make sure that things come out good on YouTube. Uh, I won't be able to record my live stuff while I'm recording it until uh, I get an external hard drive hooked up to this. And then even then, I'm kind of in a quandary as to how to get all of this hooked up and record at the same time, to go live and record. Um, there's there's supposed to be a way to do it with this with this uh, audio video mixer. So I'm still uh, learning how to use this stuff. And I've had to stop all of that so that I can build this cabinet. Uh, I had everything set up here on a table. In fact, when Joey was here, I had this huge fold out table with all of my shit strewn across it. And at some point, I'm going to lay everything out on my rug and go through it and try to organize it all into my live box and a couple of duffel bags. And uh, it it seems almost impossible. It's challenging. But uh, I think that's where I'm finding most of the fun is the challenge of, of making it all work together because it is a challenge it is quite a challenge but i love it i love it. in fact the the whole live thing somewhere else is really appealing to me mainly because i've done what four or five months sitting here doing it at home and the occasional live on my phone that just doesn't cut it for me not after doing this right so I really cannot wait to uh, sink my teeth into something different. You know, even though I'll probably leave all my teeth in that something different if I bite down too hard. Uh, but I digress. Uh, well, dad, dang it. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then at some point, I'll probably take a break from the live. Here in the mornings um, and do just nighttime live. I mean, what I might do is set it up so that if I'm not live Monday night here, I'm live Friday night here or Saturday night here or Tuesday night here or Sunday during the day here or Sunday night here. Um, and uh, so I may take some time off for mornings uh, mainly to have some dental work done and I won't be able to do this back and forth live thing, you know? Um, so I'll take a break from that and do some 
behind the scenes work for a while, creating videos, doing a lot of live stuff, getting other uh, other people on the show. Uh, on occasion, get my friend David to to do an interview so that I can just kind of hang back and do behind the scenes stuff for a little while. Uh, and that'll kind of help me to get my video technical chops, right? Uh, it's hard to get, it's hard to get really technical and do a multi-camera show when you're the talent and the, 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 the technical guy at the same time, you know, I mean, writer, producer, director, editor, cameraman, uh, actor. I mean, I'm doing it all. So it gets a little, uh, cumbersome, right? But, uh, with the introduction of the mobile live aspect and the multi-camera and the co computer graphics and recorded segment stuff that I can do live, it's going to be a it's going to be a, a different kind of show. Once again, it's going to evolve into a new different kind of show. And I'm just happy as happy as a clam about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty much waiting on two things to finish off my box. Um, some great foam uh, packing stuff, um, big bricks of foam with the pick and pull. So you can pull out a section to stick something in to then be cushioned, right? So I'm going to put in these pick and pull uh, foam cushions and have all of my cameras in these little cushion pockets, right? And microphones and stuff, components of mixers and whatnot. So they'll have their own little safe place in a drawer. I'll have it so that all the drawers lock together so they can't slide open when moving. Um, I'm waiting on the 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 plug for the back of my box and it is a, a male plug it's the three prongs inside of a receptacle so i can just take the end of my extension cord and plug it on there and now my box is powered uh, and then that one one plug will activate a junction box and an outlet <clears throat> uh, and that'll power everything that i need so i can just run one cord uh and power my box. Um, each camera will have its own HDMI cord plus a power cord. I don't want to rely on batteries during recording, during live stuff, because it's unreliable. If I'm mobile out somewhere, then I can use a couple of live batteries. Um, more than likely, I'll just use the van power to power everything, including the cameras, because uh, everything is pretty pretty light on the uh, electrical drain. I mean, none of these things take a lot of juice. So I should be able to power my whole live box and cameras uh, through my van. And that'll be neat. That'll be way cool. That'll be totally bitching. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm just all, all over the place right now. Emotionally, mentally, I mean, like, I'm in a quandary, you yeah. <laughs> But I, my main thing is I can't wait to be able to pack it all in the van and go anywhere. Eyewitness news, you know, I'm on the job, I'm roaming. Set up a camera and shoot, you know. It would be, I, I want it so that if I hear something going on, I can be there and set up and live within 15 minutes of of being there right that is live you know hey did you know this is going on boom i'm there i'm recording you know and i can literally get set up and start recording i got one camera boom go live and then while that one camera is live i can set up three other cameras or two cameras and a graphics computer Right. I mean, there's so much, there's just so much I can do now. It's just, it's, it's gone exponentially. It's snowballed into such an extreme events. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, oh. Yeah. So a lot happened last season. I mean, I, I didn't expect as much to happen, right? Uh, we went to a lot of concerts and saw a lot of shows. Uh, I actually got to meet a lot of fantastic artists that I have admired. Uh, I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's freaking crazy. The fact that I got to meet Big Sandy alone uh, was just a bizarre experience. And then to be able to meet and shake hands with, with Ben Harper and his daughter, Harris Harper and Mitch Rowland from uh, the Harry Styles band and his, his girlfriend, uh, Sarah Jones from the Harry Styles band. Um, and then, you know, to, to, to meet the new people that I've met uh, on YouTube and through my friends here in town and through open mic, uh, the concerts that my daughter has taken me to, uh, just, just in the last six months, right? It's just crazy. Not to mention the last year and a half. Uh, so I'm, I'm overwhelmed. And then a few weeks ago, she comes in uh, on my morning show live and tells me that she's taking us to see ELO, right? Electric Light Orchestra with Jeff Lynn. Uh, and yeah, I cried. I cried like a little freaking baby on the show, during the show, after the show. For days afterwards, I would get teary-eyed about, about my daughter walking in and saying, guess what? I got us tickets to ELO. Um, season, season two. Uh, of this morning show, you know, the, the people that I've met, you know, um, uh, I don't consider anyone through my channel a subscriber. Uh, I really do consider y'all friends. Um, if, if you're going to take the time to come here and visit, subscribe and to, to view, to put a thumbs up on something or just to hang out, or even if you don't, just the fact that you've stopped by to give me the, the, the nod of approval by subscribing even if you never come and watch another video thank you so much for your help uh, i can't believe i'm at 77 subscribers uh, i was at 78 a couple of days ago and for some reason i lost a subscriber probably somebody who clicked on it accidentally right or clicked on it and then watched some of my videos and then thought eh -eh, this guy ain't for me and that's totally cool because you know i am not everybody's cup of tea Look at the bags and sags under these eyes. This, you know, when I first started doing this morning show, these bags went away because I found a niche. I was sleeping more. I was happy I was doing more. And then I got to where it became overwhelming and I wasn't sleeping. So hopefully I can find that sweet spot again where I get enough sleep at night and then I can take a little nap during the day and catch up and try to alleviate some of the stress under these eyes because, man, that is, I look zombie-ish. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the, so many, so many people that have stopped by to say hello, um, uh, Mike in the garage, crazy Mike in the garage up in Canada, um, Mike at, uh, Gorilla Gold Hunters up in Canada and Vice over in, uh, in Bernay, um, Krim over in, uh, Ireland, uh, Joey on the East coast of Virginia, uh, you know, there's a lot of my friends and family members um, who who subscribe but don't watch, um, mainly because I'm on at such an odd time that they really don't watch unless I I share something specifically with them and say you got to check this out. And I don't like to do that a lot. I don't like to uh, tag people in every single uh, post I do about my show because i could i could every single time i could tag people and i would get a lot of people saying stop tagging me on this shit so i don't every once in a while i'll tag you know everybody because i don't want to you know single anyone out so i'll just tag everybody across my facebook 
uh, friends list uh, and say, hey, check this out. Like my uh, Elsinore 2025 reunion stuff. Now that I will I will tag everyone as often as possible to get people in on that. Every once in a while for my YouTube stuff, I'll tag everybody. Hey, I got something special going on. I really want everybody to check it out or get some input. It never really happens. I get a few people, um, you know, older friends and family that that kind of chime in. But for the most part, I'm I'm pretty much on my own here on YouTube. And that's cool. You know, but once in a while, somebody comes in and hangs out uh, that, that I've known for a long time. But mostly it's it's new friends. And being a yes man now, uh, I say yes to new friends. Oh, wow. it's um, God, an hour and a half. That means I've been up for oh, almost three hours. No wonder my neck hurts so freaking much. Oh, and I woke up in just horrible pain this morning, uh, even though I only got in a three hours sleep. I think because I was so tired, I slept too long in one spot. Because I woke up and my neck was like, and I, I rolled over and tried to switch my neck position, and, and my neck just locked up. It was like my neck said, "Don't do that, ever." Uh, and it hurt, and so I said, oh, "All right." And then I rolled back over to go back to sleep. I thought, "Wait a second, don't I have something to do this morning?" Oh yeah, I get to go live again. Man, do I miss going live. I mean, literally. Um, at, at first, I would get up early in the morning, and I'm like, mm, I got to do something, I got to do something. So I'd get up, and I would just kind of repeat the process and then get into something, right? Because that's the whole reason I took the week off. And, you know, by by the you know middle of last week, I was sleeping in. I was sleeping until 8, you know? Uh, and my wife was getting up before me and starting coffee. And I was like, wow, this is different. This is different. I don't like it. I want to get up early. So I'm, I'm probably going to keep the schedule, right? It seems to work good for me. Yeah, at nighttime, I, I get to sleep really late, you know, 11, 12, 1, 2 sometimes. And then I got to be up here at 4. But then I can lay down. You know, after this is over, I can go lay back down or I can go to work and then come home and take a quick nap and then get up and go out and do something in the evening. And that's my whole plan is to stop having so much downtime. You know, I don't if if I've got downtime, I want to be doing something gearing up for another episode, right? Creating content, creating graphics. Um, creating a video for the show. Uh, and the whole getting up early thing, I think it just has to stay a normal routine. You know, I think I'm doing, I, I'm getting better rest when I do a split shift. I, I, it just feels, you know, if I try to get all of my sleep in one big chunk, uh, I feel really lazy and I'm in more pain throughout the day because I've, I've spent so much time in one position and usually the wrong position. Uh, and it hurts, it hurts like hell. So I think, uh, Joey, have you gone to sleep yet? Man. Dude, you need to go to bed, dude. You got you got a job. You got to work, man. You need to save up for that next vacation so I can see you again, bro. And uh, yeah, I got your address and, and and I got a little stack of things here for you. And I'm gonna be putting together a little uh a little gift pack. Uh and I'm really, really excited about that. Uh so yeah. It's not gonna be coming right away because I've got some other little things that I wanna that i want to put together um but yeah thank you so much for coming by joey uh yeah i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna remember this whole 
your visit and this whole YouTube experience is going to stay with me for the rest of my life. It's something that I've wanted to do my whole life. You know, dude, I want to have my own show and I want to be able to do this and do that. You know, and I'm like, I'm like an 80s guy, right? Kid video, right? Back in the 80s. And I'm like, man, if I could have had this shit back in the 80s, or if I could have been, you know, that age now, man, I really envy you, you young cats out there being able to do this shit with all of this, this new technology and stuff. You know, you guys don't realize how lucky you are. You know, you just don't. You are so freaking privileged to have all of this, this technology shit, right? You see that sun coming in has really got my face lit up, huh? Yeah. Oh, and I'm just gobbling this shit up, man. I'm like analog man and digital world. Kid video is is you know is reborn. And you know what's really neat is that uh, I can take my old my old video cameras, right, and and use them on YouTube, not just in videos, but in the live stuff too. I mean, I can. I can bring you live stuff on an old video camera, do a retro, retro cam, you know, vintage vision, uh, you know, or just do a, you know, do interviews with old cameras, you know, or do stuff, shoot stuff with multi-camera and then, you know, edit these different, these different visuals together, you know, because I can take a digital camera and flip it to black and white. You know, or run it through an editing program and and goof it up a little bit in any direction. But to take it and the raw footage to be, you know, of an aged quality, that's that's going to be different. That's going to be neat. To which was my initial idea was to take old cameras and put them together, making new videos with old cameras and putting them together with old video stuff and kind of creating this, which is kind of a neat idea. And I might get there eventually. I was like Bush Bush and I talking the other day about um, recreating old TV shows, episodes from old TV shows, right? And uh, I, I mentioned Norman Lear and how he had taken All in the Family and the Jeffersons and he had brought them back to live television and aired and did, did a recreation of the show live, right? And uh, while doing it live seems a little, a little too much, um, but to recreate episodes, I mean, all you would need would be green screen, right? That's it, green screen, and then you could literally take, you know, photographs of sets and create the actual set, and re and then do actually recreate, reproduce episodes from you know, from different TV shows. You know, fucking Land of the Lost, right? All you need is the costumes. And then everything else is just green screen, which was most of that show anyway, was blue screen, chroma key. Uh, so yeah, that would that would be kind of cool. A little beyond my realm of, of productional expertise. Uh, but yeah, that, that seems like it'd be really, really cool. I'd watch that. I'd totally watch that. Now, it'd be a lot easier just to reproduce theme songs, right? That would be a little easier to do. Uh, reproduce theme songs uh, and do like a, a set, like a 45-hour-long set of just theme music, you know? Let's let's do Bonanza. Let's go into Speed Racer. Let's go to Land of the Lost, you know? Let's go to All in the Family. And let's just bounce around and hit all of these things you know, all these TV shows and then create videos having to do with those, those themes. I don't know. It just sounds, you know, that'd be neat. You could have a group that just does theme music, you know, or fifties music, you know, I mean, you got like Sha Na Na, right. You know, you could do TBT. Shut up. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you get annoyed now. You can really see my shirt now. Copper Mountain College. This is the college that uh, my daughter 
is attending right now. Uh, darn it. Pardon me, moi. Well, that was a good one. Hmm. So here, I I packed it. I might as well smoke it. Uh, I did a read back in here and grab me a lighter. All right, people. We're going in. First bong hit of the morning. Let's see if I can scare away some of these yeah, pains. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I waited till this morning to have a shower. Had I done my shower last night, I probably would not have wanted to get up this morning. I would have been sleeping so good. I would have just said, ah, fuck it. And I didn't want to say fuck it. I wanted to be here. I wanted to be here with y'all. I miss being here. I know this is kind of a different view than you're used to in the morning. Uh, me too. I'm used to having more room to roam around. This is kind of a close-up uh, shot. These my Pink Floyd posters up here. I wish the place had been cleaner when Joey was here. Uh, it would have been more fun to, I don't know, hang out and uh, dig into stuff on the set. You know, I mean, it's not it's not real often that you get to visit a YouTube channel and go behind the scenes and check out stuff in, in reality. Uh, we didn't have a chance to do much. I encouraged uh, Joey to come up and kind of move around and check stuff out. But we were both really dumbstruck. We were both really in awe of what was going on. Uh, I'm hoping that. That next time when when Joey comes by or anyone, that we're going to have more to do, you know. It seems that whoever comes by, we wind up just talking and talking and talking, and we don't really have enough time to to get in, into anything. Uh, when Bush was here, uh, he was here for like an hour and a half, two hours, and we just sat here and talked. I mean, I wanted to do so much more and, and I wanted to, you know, and it was like, there was just, there was no way we were going to be able to do anything. Uh, and it's that first time, uh, pardon me, that, uh, that first timers feeling, I guess, you know, when you get somebody over for their first time or you're at somebody's place for the first time, you're kind of like, I don't know what to do, you know? And I'm hoping that next time I get, especially Bush over here, he's going to feel more comfortable you know and I'll, I'll have more room to move around and do stuff um but this is this is this side of the the place is my green room uh if i look that way i'm looking at where i used to sit in the mornings where i will be back in the mornings uh, i've got the sun coming through the window facing at me where usually it's at my back or at the side of my face when we come back we're going to have uh, we're going to be doing three camera angles, plus graphics, plus other cameras that I can pull in through a secondary computer. Uh, so the show is going to go from a one camera, one computer, one mic show to a multi-camera computer graphics, uh, sound, uh, anywhere. It's just, it's going to be, it's going to be phenomenal. I, I I can't wait. I spent last night working on this mobile unit, and my daughter just came in and said, wow, you hooked up the TV. Wow, that is really cool looking. Uh, and it is. I'm, I, I impressed myself. I've got a lot more work to do on it, some more holes to cut in it. I've got to do an access door on the back. Uh, I've got to put the electricity into it. Uh, I've got to wire all of my cables and uh, and then hide them. Uh, I've got some great sleeve, wire sleeve tubing that I can conceal all of my wires in. So the, the, the wire bundle that goes to the, this computer over here 
will all be bundled together and then split off to plug in. And then this one to this computer, all one bundle, and then it'll split off to plug in. Up behind the TV is going to take no less than three or four cords up behind the TV. That'll all be in a bundle. Uh, everything inside the cabinet will all be bundled and uh, wound up and tacked up high out of the way. So nothing dangles, nothing interferes, nothing's tangled. I'll have just the four camera cords, HDMI plugs hanging out the back. Um, I won't have to, and then the, the, some audio cables hanging out the back. It, it power, I mean, it's just, uh, 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 uh. yeah, I'm, I'm getting too excited again. Uh, so yeah, I put my drums, my drum kit is in the van. It's in the van, man. So uh, tonight I will be going to open mic and I'll be taking a guitar. And I'll be taking the drums and I'll set up the drums so that whoever shows up has a drum kit. If somebody knows how to play the drums, uh, if David comes out, he won't have to bring a drum kit again. He'll just have to bring, uh, you know, let's he wants his his snare or his cymbal, you know, something to add to the kit to make it, you know, um, geared towards that artist uh and that's cool uh on occasion i will be bringing out uh, a full-size keyboard yamaha keyboard uh and stand and bench uh on occasion i'll be bringing out um a ukulele a mandolin um uh, whatever uh, whatever other instruments we can we can dig up we're going to be bringing them out so that no matter who shows up, if they say, well, I didn't bring my Wachama, it doesn't matter because it's, there's something there. There'll be plenty of guitars to borrow that three people without guitars should be able to get up there, borrow guitars and get on stage. Right. Um, drums, keyboards. Uh, we've got a little three quarter size violin. I'll freaking bring that too. somebody will be able to do something with it. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, I think my high aspirations of what the um, live YouTube stuff will look like doesn't even compare to the high aspirations of what Bush wants this to be, right? And uh, I think that he and I are on such a parallel uh, journey right now that, uh, you know, the means will definitely justify the end. I mean, it's going to be, you know, it's such a merging of of not just the minds, but the the creative. Uh, yeah, it's just. Oh, wow. And then when you mix in all of these other people that keep popping up, right? Uh, it, you know, I just, yeah, I'm really grateful and really lucky for everything that's been going on. My wife has been not just being, you know, saying yes and being supportive, but she's literally like kicking me, you know, it's like a kick in the ass, you know? Yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. You know, my my daughter gives me such, you know, positive input. It's like I feel like I can't go wrong with whatever I do when I when I talk to my daughter because she, you know, she gives me such encouragement. Uh, and maybe, maybe it's because I, I, I do the same thing with her in school, you know, and it's just reciprocal. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way that she is. Maybe it's the way she was raised, you know, but she's really, really encourages me. Uh, even if she doesn't know it, you know, she, she's like a, one of the biggest influences in my life right now is my daughter, my daughter, my wife, Bush, Dave, you, Joey. I mean, all of everyone right now is just a huge driving force to make all of this, um, just get better and better. 
I can't wait to actually create a music video that's more than just a one camera shot from a concert that I, you know, fluff up. Uh, I want to take one of my songs, record it the way I hear it, and then not just take a one shot video of it, which I already have, but actually expand on that and do multiple ca multiple camera angles in multiple locations, in multiple outfits. I mean, just take it to the next, you know, just the song, nothing fancy, just a video that has to do with just the song, right? And take it and create something that I can share with people to encourage them to let me make something for them, right? Uh, and I've 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 kind of done that, creating the Alice uh, or the White Rabbit video for the Tommy Tom show on my own. I just did it because I wanted to, and I I saw it in my head and thought, ooh, that'll that'd be cool. That commercial that I created that got yanked off of YouTube, uh, that big sandy. Uh, video where they do that fair and young song uh, you know and or, or the little concert videos that i've done you know those are all neat and stuff but i want i i don't know maybe i just want to be sought after i want to be the guy in town where people say oh you need a video made go see him all right that's that's the guy i want to be i guess you know and it, uh and i'm kind of aiming everything Toward that, I mean, I'm not putting all of my eggs in one basket because YouTube is allowing me to do so much and to take it and do all of these different things that to be able to create videos for people specifically would just kind of be an expansion of that. And I don't think it would, you know, diminish or hinder anything else that I'm doing with this channel, you know. But you know, to, to be the guy here in town locally um, where people want something created on video and they come to me, that would be awesome. The, I would love to be the guy in town where somebody wants to do a live on their channel and wants to tap me for the expertise and the technical gizmos to fucking do it, right? Yeah. Then I start looking at, well, you know what? <laughs> At some point, I could get to where I charge money for my services. I don't, I don't see this right now as one of those things because I'm having too much fun. This is a hobby. This is this is like building model airplanes or collecting stamps. All right, that's all this is. This is some crazy old weird bearded guy's notion of entertainment and um, fun. It's a hobby, literally. It's just. A thing, it's like building a boat in your basement. How am I going to get it out? It doesn't matter. You're never going to use it. You're just building. You know, you're going to rip it apart and build it again. You know? Uh, yeah. This is just me. Mm -hmm. I got to warm that up. But if this becomes something that I can actually make money on, that's different. I, I don't feel like I would ever want to monetize this channel here. Uh, well, no time, no time soon, anyway. But I mean, what would be the point? I'm not going to be. I'm. I'm already spending way more money than I could ever make on YouTube, right? I mean, if I, even if I only spend a hundred, two hundred dollars a year, at this point, it's way more money that i'm ever going to make on youtube so it's just like it's pointless to try to go and create a, a monetized youtube channel right but if i can use the channel to share uh my abilities and use this to garner some kind of work that does make a little bit of money or swag i mean i'm totally into doing something for somebody and getting uh, a t-shirt or oh here i got this whole guitar you want this old guitar I'm, yeah fucking bring it on dude uh, because like I said, this is a hobby. I'm doing this for me. If I do this for me and it benefits you 
and you want to reciprocate in kind, well, great. If not, I'm still doing this for me. I'm still having more fun than anybody else. So I'm, I'm cool with that. I don't, I don't need anything at this point. Uh, if, if, if I, if somebody gives me something for what I'm doing, then essentially I become beholden to that person, right? Because now I'm on like payroll. Well, I, I hired you to do this job and it's, you know, you, you didn't do it the right, you know, it's like, fuck you. I didn't, you didn't hire me to do shit. I did this on my own, right? If you don't like it, that's too bad. This is, this is me doing me, you know, for you. So, uh, yeah, but I would totally love to make some, uh, some videos for other people. So I think my first thing is I'm going to, I'm going to be taking my, my mobile deal and, uh, it's going to probably spend a lot of time getting loaded up into my van and going out and doing stuff. If I could do one video for myself uh it would have to be let's go to the movies the, the 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 latest song that i've written i've gotten help with a lot of my music over the last few months since summer uh from david uh a really good friend here in town uh but if i could take this one song and create a video for it uh <laughs> This would this would this would be the one that I would, you know, that I would want to create good enough to share with people so that I could say, look, I could do this or any kind of video that you want. But this is what I'm capable of. Uh, and it means expanding my uh, my editing abilities uh, and my uh, stock footage library. Um buying all of those little accessories to stuff that I already have, right? Getting getting the, the better YouTube studio version, paying a little bit, getting the better uh, Windows 395 or 365 uh, version so that I've got more editing, the um, clip champs, um, joining Internet Archive so that I could save stuff to a playlist to make it easier uh, to access. So all of these things, you know, I could do uh, and need to do to create better videos, to create better content. So I'm I'm really jazzed about uh, what's coming up. I mean, season three uh, of Mornings is going to be ooh, pretty intense. Pretty intense. We're going to go places. We're going to do things. Uh, on occasion, I will come to you live from a mobile in the morning. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get a thermos, and I'm going to have my van set up the night before. I may even sleep in my van at a mobile location and wake up live at five. Right? I mean, won't that be something? Uh, I still want to do a telethon broadcast and i think season three just might hold uh, a, a live long telethon uh and I, it's not going to be so much to get subscribers or to get viewers or that kind of stuff but mainly to give away some of this crap that i've been promising to give away uh, i'm putting together a box of this fun stuff to send off to joey and uh at the same time i'm starting to look at okay now what kind of things am i going to be putting together for um a gift pack for somebody who wins in a drawing right because i think over a telethon a, a, a multi-day telethon uh, i'm probably going to be doing two or three drawings right and giving stuff away okay when i get to 10 viewers watching all at once i'm going to hold a drawing right and uh I, I don't know what i'll probably do is i'll hold two drawings i'll pull a name out of a hat that's got everybody facebook youtube friends family that kind of stuff and i'll pull a name out and then i'll also pull a name of one of the 10 viewers that have signed on that says i'm watching i'm watching i'm watching and then i get 10 and it's like okay one of those 10 wins and one of these 
hundred and some odd people in, right? That'll be cool. I gotta warm this up again. I'll be right back. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we got a slight change of venue for the show this morning, but I think um, next Monday we're going to have a slightly different version of Elsinore Brothers Studio. Uh, I'm thinking about moving this tall cabinet in front of my window uh, and going to a regular short wooden stereo cabinet something more traditional with a glass door um and uh it, it just depends on if it fits in my spot and if the turntable fits in the turntable spot i may have to modify the cabinet to get it all to work but i can do that you know i got a craig jig and a table saw and all that kind of shit so i got an awesome set of tools man i think i can do it uh i mean i took this this little chest of drawers thingy here and turned it into my live mobile cabinet uh and i think that you know and i you know i built all kinds of shit so i don't want to have to build a stereo cabinet but if i do i've already got a door because of the old stereo cabinet that i have and if that cabinet doesn't work i'll either modify it or rebuild it so that it will hold my components right because it's got to hold up it's got to hold a reel to reel uh and a, and a receiver and cassette and eight track and it's got to hold a big heavy duty turntable and that's the one thing i'm not sure if it'll fit in that that existing wooden cabinet that i have uh it uh it, it could be a, it could be a problem situation but check it out you know uh so yeah, things are going to look a little bit different. Not too different. Uh, of course, I'll be in my normal morning chair, uh, but I'll be sitting adjacent to my new uh, live mobile live unit, MLU. We'll call it an MLU, my mobile live unit. Uh, 
Uh, because here, it'll be in command of the shell. And anywhere else I go, it'll be in command of whatever I'm, I'm doing. It'll all be taking place right there. Uh, once I get the external hard drive, I can create a show live uh, during a live open mic or or event or whatever is going on down here. Set up cameras, get somebody on a on a, a moving camera uh, and a couple of stationary static cameras, and then just sit in my van and edit live stuff while recording. And then it's put it into the editing bay, put a front and a back on it. And boom, it's on YouTube within minutes after having uh, recorded it. And in some cases, it's easier to do that because of the live locations out here. Sometimes just give shitty signals. And then the people will have internet uh, access and a modem, but it's really slow, you know. So uh, I'm going to have to pick and choose my venues. The, uh, the thing that I did on 420 down here at the beatnik lounge it, toward the front door the signal was better than it was deeper into the building but I, that's probably common with most signals um so with that uh it might be better to have things set up in the van and then just run a couple of cameras in you know uh which means i've got to get some heavy duty rubber mats to throw down over cables uh, so that I can run stuff in without people tripping over shit, right? Uh, and I think in a lot of these locations, because I'll be going from my van into a place, I may just get clips and clip my cameras up high and then just clip the cables up high from the van window out through the door you know, up at the top of the doorway and through uh, and, and into a place uh, just to keep from having people walking over stuff and, and the, the possibility of, of trippage, right? Because I don't want to lose a camera to some doofus drunk guy who just, ah, what the hell's going on? What's that? What did I bump into? Ah, nothing, you know, three or $400. That's it. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be cool. Um, I'm really, 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 really excited about mobile live, mobile anything really. Uh, yeah. So at the end of this this episode, all of this stuff gets packed into a a little bag and goes with me tonight. Uh, I've got to work today. I've got to I believe I've got a house to clean. Uh, I've got more work to do on this mobile live unit. I've got to cut down my computer boards, attach them to their swivels, uh, paint the edges that I cut. Uh, I need to paint the supports for the fold-out wings that have the computer swivels. Uh, I need to trim down the, the board that holds the keyboards. Uh, and it'll be a drawer, and you open up the drawer, pull up a hinged panel, pull a keyboard out, set it down on that hinged panel, and then it bumps so that it that drawer now becomes a keyboard shelf. Um, and then my other components up on the top, all video stuff. So I should be able to go live, and while I'm live on one computer, be creating the graphics for the end of the program. Uh, and that'll be neat, right? So it'll be like, okay, well, when you're signing up on this list to go on stage, you have to come over and sign up with me and give me the correct spelling of your name and where to find your your art, where to find your music, where to find your comedy, where to find your, you know, whatever. Uh, where to find you and so that way it's more than just hey here's this guy's nickname up there on stage but at the same time now you can find out where this guy is in in reality and go check out more of his stuff or her stuff or their stuff right and that to me is really really exciting not just being able to share little snippets of people's lives and their talents but 
the ability to share them in their entirety, right? Like here, here's their music on stage a little bit. And now here's a bunch of their stuff on their website, on their channel, on, you know, their page, whatever, you know, and, and, you know, and, oh, can I get together with you at some point and do an interview, right? Show up early at five o'clock on a Monday and I'll do a Monday night live at five for an hour and then do a sound check during five, six to seven, right? And then go live at seven for the open mic. That to me sounds like a brilliant use of my time, talent, technical expertise, and their time and talent, right? So collectively, we're sharing like everything about ourselves. Like, this is what I do. And my what I do is helping you share what you do, right? It's a fucking win-win. So I'm really, I'm really pumped up about the possibilities, not just for my channel and what I can do for me, but how I can also help the musicians and the artists in my, my own community, right? Because this whole YouTube thing, um, for me, is about a sense of community. That's it. You know, let's uh, let's kind of build a little neighborhood that's global, right? But it's it's a little neighborhood that is local to my channel. And I've got friends everywhere. And we all are kind of in this thing together to help each other, right? Because that's what this whole planet is about, right? We're just all here in it together. And we should all help each other. So in my own little way, I'm trying to do that, you know? I can hear some voices out there. I don't know if anybody else can. Uh, let's see. We're getting, we're getting, it's, oh, it's after seven on this Earth Day, April 22nd, 2024. It's crazy. Crazy talk. Absolutely crazy talk. Um, hey, hey, buddy. Yeah, I totally did Monday. It's Monday morning, which means there's probably uh, people out there getting ready to go to work. Where's my tools, man? You got my tools in your truck? I don't know where I put my tools. Uh, we get a lot of that. You know? We totally get a lot of that. Uh, I think I'm going to do a little bit of a trim on this before season three. Now, my wife and daughter have been saying, come on, it's all scraggly. Uh, so I'll probably do a little trim on it today at some point i gotta go to the dentist right so rather than him him having to pull out a weed whacker to get through my mustache i think i'll give myself a little trim today and then by next week i should have kind of filled out a little uh nicely it'll probably be like a big grizzly adams you know i'll lose a little in the length but it'll get fuller right and i'll probably enlist my daughter to help me out get a little trim going on. Maybe I'll get her to trim the back of my hair so it can grow out a little bit too, you know. Most people in the summertime like to get a short haircut or something. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be hot regardless, you know. And I like to keep my my mask on. I like to keep this this face that that really uh it helps to keep people away. Um the only way somebody's going to come up to me and engage me in conversation is if I smile at them, right? Otherwise, they they look at me and they're like, well, I don't even want to get next to that dude, you know. But um, I have a real disarming um, smile and way, you know, when <laughs> when I'm uh, when I'm so inclined to. Uh, but most of the time, I just keep my average, you know old guy scowl keeps people away from me keeps people f fucking with me uh there there are a lot of people out there at supermarkets and stores and gas stations and stuff who know that i'm a nice guy and you know friends around here know that i'm a nice guy but most of the people i want them to think that i'm an asshole and i'm an old fuckhead and you just stay the fuck away from me because i can be that really quick if you want me to but it's usually someone else that determines whether or not I'm an asshole. I mean, I don't just go out and decide, you know, I'm going to be an asshole all day today. Uh, it's usually somebody will come along 
and turn me turn me from that nice guy into that asshole. And then I have to I have to really, really try to shake that guy off because I don't I don't like to be that asshole. I don't like to go to places and have people uh, treat me one way because they, they only want to see me one way. You know, I've given them the disarming smile. I've talked to them. I'm being nice to them. And still they, they want to look at me and see me as some kind of fucking bum, you know, because I look the way I look, you know. Uh, I don't know. I think I, I dress better than a lot of people that I know, you know. Every day I go out, I wear something. I put thought into every single thing that I fucking wear. You know, does everything match? Does it look good? Do I look presentable? You know, I never cared about that before. Fuck them, you know. But I do now. And it's fun. It's it's fun to go out in a pair of Vans, corduroys, and a t-shirt and still be the best dressed guy within, you know, 800 fucking people, you know. I can't help it if I'm beautiful, baby. I'm a fucking rock star. Love me or or love me or fuck off, you know? Mm -mm -mm. No, but really. No, but seriously, folks. I could give a flying fuck what you think of me. Um, yeah. I'm not in this world for anybody but my wife and daughter and myself. You know, that's it. You know? Uh, which is really weird because uh, I got this whole YouTube thing going on and I find myself being invested in, in more than just the people I know. I find myself invested in people like Joey, you know, and his trip around uh, the uh, the Pacific West here. Uh, I mean, he got to go to uh, Arizona, Phoenix, uh, what you call it, uh, the Grand Canyon. Right. He said from in one day, he went from the Grand Canyon to San Bernardino. Right. Yeah, that's that's California right there. Right. Uh, that's pretty cool. And then he drove up up to San Francisco with his friend and they tooled around there and came down the coast. Uh, they went around Los Angeles and Hollywood and stuff. Uh, I think they left from here and went down to San Diego and then back into L.A. to, to take the plane back to Virginia. Virginia. Uh, and I was invested in the whole trip. I'm like, oh, I hope he sends me photos. And he did. He was sending me photos from the Grand Canyon. Uh, and uh, and uh, even out here in Joshua Tree, when, it, when they came out here uh, and they went through the park. Uh, and, and so at some point, I'll get on YouTube and I'll share some of those pictures of his journey. Uh, I promised not to share photos of him. Uh, and uh, at some point, you know, we'll get to where uh, I'm going to want photos of people not to share, um, especially if they don't want their photos shared, but so that I can, you know, have that that really face to face connection because people can see me all the time. All you got to do is turn the shit on and here I am. Durr, 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 durr. But to be able to to look into someone's eyes and go, ah, there you are, you know. I think that's going to become more and more important, more important than subscriber count, right, is the quality of friendship that I make with people, you know, uh, and I'm real, real, real excited about that. That's, that's, uh, I mean, my wife and daughter were like, they were blown away that Joey was here, uh, all the way, all the way from over there. He had only been on watching for like a week, week and a half. And then all of a sudden he's sitting here in my house and we're hanging out, you know? And I'm like, wow, I want more of this. You know, I want, uh, I'm going to figure out how to do my old school phone conversations and put up a picture in picture of somebody's face or their likeness or their representation. Uh, I want to be able to do an actual back and forth video conference with somebody. And I think I can do that now doing a Facebook chat here on one computer and then channeling it through my mixer into the graphics, right? Uh, take me off the picture and pop up their picture on a screen and then have me down. I mean, it's just going to be so digital. 
right? Uh, and because it'll be happening, it'll be recorded. Uh, yeah, wow. Wow, you know, I'm like, uh, it's just totally too much. It's totally too much. The thought of, of doing a live mobile from a hilltop as the sun comes up. Yeah, that gets me right in the jujus, man. Just uh, can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, you know, and then on that level, uh, I've been talking to a mechanic, a local uh, mobile mechanic, uh, and uh, Mobile Blessings, I believe, is uh, Anthony from Mobile Blessings out here in 29 Palms. Uh, so if any of you local people uh, look him up, I'm sure he's going to have a Facebook uh, and uh, some kind of way to get in touch with him. If you need to get in touch with him, I got his number. Uh, give me a call. So I'm talking with him. And as soon as things settle down here and I get back into the groove again, back into New York groove, Ace Freely, uh, I want to have him come over and diagnose my van get things set up for him to fix my fucking van so I can uh, go anywhere I want at any time without fear of having to come home on a tow truck, right? But so that I can go anywhere and set this shit up and drive, you know, to another fucking state and do my live shit. No, I'm just, yeah. So I think we're going to be wrapping it up at eight today because uh, the little misses should be getting up soon. And we've got just a little bit of work today. And I want to get that out of the way as soon as possible so I can get my, uh, get working on this this room and this uh mlu and uh I, there's not much to do for tonight because i'm just taking a laptop a microphone and a camera i'm just going to be testing speed and accessibility um and and doing some sound checks uh I, I may or may not broadcast the whole show um and since i'm just going to be using this microphone i'm hoping i'm a hoping that we're going to pick up some good some good sound with this one uh just going live off the amps and shit so why well, you can hear the cars and everything so yeah i mean we're going to be able to really do some stuff here hey whoa that's heavy that's loud so yeah um totally people so tonight tonight should be uh different if you get a chance if anybody wants to come and tune in um i'll probably be setting up early so that we can do a live mic uh camera test and i'll probably do a youtube live really quick 10 or 15 minutes something that we can set up have somebody doing sound and video while i go over and get on my phone and watch and listen to see what it all looks like and sounds like uh and then we'll go live at some point during the night and broadcast as much as we can live. Uh, like I said, it's 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 only a test. Uh, I, I think I'll finally go in and talk to the uh, the owner and um, give her my card and kind of let her see how you know she feels about about my end of the situation uh like i said most most of most people aren't really going to get into my channel some of my music stuff some of my video stuff my live stuff most people are just not going to be into because i'm just such an odd duck right and this show is like a weird weird fucking show but if she can see you know what i can do or anybody can just go to my channel and kind of see the different things that i can do with what i got 
And that has just exploded since the the you know the advent of this whole multi-camera graphics computer thing. So um I mean I really have to to uh to do some more stuff so that I have more examples of what I can do. So the the Monday night where I introduce all of the gear uh, is really going to be the showcase for what I can do. Uh, and I'll be warming up to that with my uh, morning show. I'll be using the graphics, sharing videos and audio and uh, the combinations of the two together and opening credits and closing credits. So uh, I'll really be able to showcase my abilities by the time I get to Monday Night Live in full, in full detail. And uh, I'll probably do the first couple of nights and have my MLU set up out there outside um, so that it's kind of easier for me to kind of access everything that I'm doing. And then once I've got it all nailed down, I'll probably just have my van parked right there and leave the MLU strapped in the van and just sit in the van and and just kind of bounce back and forth between cameras and get somebody that I know to do some handheld stuff or some zooming. I've got remotes, so I'll probably do some zooming uh, from the van. But uh, it's, yeah, man, it's just going to be so, so fucking hairball to do this shit. It's going to be great. This kind of live is real easy because I'm not like, okay, switch camera. Okay. Okay, switch. Okay, put in some graphics. Okay, and fade to black. Okay, fade up from black and bring in the credits. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be, it's not like I, that's what I was doing on this show. That's what this show is going to become here in the morning. And that's going to help me to create a better evening live show. Uh, I, I want this to be a different YouTube thing than anybody else. I mean, most people, when they do live, they go click and, hey, here I am, like I did this morning. <clears throat> and um, I want this to be more than just like a a Joe Rogan experience type show, right? where he goes live, but it's really kind of overproduced and edited. Uh, and there's a lot of planning, not much scripted, but there's a lot of planning, right? And I want all the planning in this to be a run of the mill, to be normal, right? It's like, okay, well, this is how the show is. He, he's got these camera angles. He shares this with this camera angle. He's got one pointed at an easel that he can share stuff. He's got graphics. He's got video and audio that he can mix in and do this, you know. Uh, and the fact that I'll be able to do live opening and closing credits, to me, that just makes me giddy. It makes me all wiggly inside, you know. Because to go from a one camera, one angle, putting a... a you know, a, a, a sheet of paper up in front of the camera, you know, for my morning show credits. Uh, it's a huge, just like going, you know, across the Atlantic to now going to the moon, right? It's that much of a difference. It's huge. Uh, I mean, my first season was just me sitting in a chair, going live, sitting in a chair, and that was it. Uh, and then we started to introduce more through season two. So by the end of season two, you know, I'm not just doing uh, old time radio Wednesdays where we listen to stuff through a microphone pointed at the speaker. But now I've got the audio pipe directly into my mixer and I've got graphics playing while we're listening. Right. So imagine that on steroids and that's where we're at with season three uh it's going to take a lot more behind the scenes shit for me right it's going to take a lot more 
but I think I've grown into that so that it's not going to be like night and day. It's going to be like waning slowly into the evening, right? It's going to, I've started to blossom with my technical expertise. I'm still an analog man living in the digital world, but kid video is, is starting to figure this shit out. And once I get this figured out and it becomes easy to knock out the stuff for the, the following episodes, right? Uh, then I'll be able to play music more because I really haven't been, my fingers have almost lost their stiffness, right? I need to pick up the guitar more and play. The morning is not the time to do it because I'm just not ready. In the evening time, I got no problem picking up the guitar and busting out something. Um, and that's where the live open mic stuff is helping me to get out of that shell, right? Because I can get up there on stage before everyone else and help do the sound check and play music and play my songs, right? And Monday, I got up there and I did a live sound check with uh, Bush uh, and he was checking out the sound and David set up a drum set. So I got up there and was banging on the drum so that David could check the sound. Um, and so I ran out and I got my guitar and my, my music and came in and sat down and I played a song while we were testing the sound. And David came up and backed me up on the drum drums, which was really sweet. That was awesome. Uh, and so he backed me up on the drums and I did uh, slip into a groove, the song that I played for Joey while he was here. Uh, and so I played it a couple of times that day, um, Monday, and thought, all right, well, I'm going to take this one out. I just played it the other day for Joey and it had been played it a couple of times. And also, all right, I'm going to play this one. So I got up and I, I played that one. And Dave said it was pretty good. Uh, I would have. I would have liked to have had more monitor. So I'm going to have to suggest that we give a little more monitor so the artist can hear themselves a little bit better, closer to what's being produced out there. Right. Uh, and then we're going to be, we're not going to live mic it. Uh, we may live mic the drums, but we're going to, we're going to come right out of his mixer, his PA. And we're going to go right into my audio mixer so that I can uh, I can then control what's going out over YouTube. So it's going to be it's going to be great, you know, and we've already looked into every all the little the little things, the lighting and the camera angles um, and where to put the microphones on stage so that they jive with the camera angles. There's a big post that runs right down through the center of the stage in front of the stage uh, because there's a big canopy awning thing out there. And uh, short of taking a chainsaw and just lopping out that post, the best thing to do is just to avoid looking at it by putting the cameras in different places, right? And putting the microphones in different places. So I'll try to have a camera set up aiming at one person with one person in the background and then another camera aiming at one person with the other person in the background and then one camera come up at the side kind of grabbing everybody so you see the drummer and then maybe having it so that we can zoom in on the drummer right uh, or zoom in on wherever the camera is aimed at at, at, a, at a microphone i want to have it set up so that if we zoom in we get like the face of that person at that microphone and then maybe in the background we can see that other person right so we're going to try to get everything set up so that it, it's visually appealing uh you know as well as uh you know yeah it's just everything it's just oh man i'm just so excited i don't i don't know i don't know where to begin i don't know where to stop uh Yeah. So anyway, to recap, um, you know, happy Earth Day, everyone. Uh, Joey, thank you for visiting. Uh, my daughter, you go, girl. 
she's graduating in a, in, in a month and off to university in the fall. And before now and then, we see a half dozen concerts, right? Or at least she does. And I get to go to CELO. And um, I get to see, the, I think, the 1975 again. Um, there's there's a, you know, oh, we get to go see um, Motion City Soundtrack pretty soon. Um, I finally get to see Killers in Las Vegas, and we're going to stay at Caesars. I'm just, wow, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Uh, and I've got a lot, you know, going on here in my life. Physically, I got a lot going on. Um, I'm getting old. Uh, I thought the plumbing in my house was, was old, this place being here from the sixties, but man, my plumbing is a lot older than this place. Uh, as you could tell by that long, uh, PP break that I took, having to leave the camera, but yeah. Uh, this is this is starting to really i mean it got real but it's it's really real now it's just getting realer it's just getting every day is just a new exciting experience literally every single day something ah uh, I can't wait to, to come home and take a nap after work today so that I can get up and go out tonight. It's like, you know what, the sooner I get back into bed and go to sleep, the sooner I can be up and going out and doing my thing again. Mm. Oh, that's cold. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, people. Ah, walkie-talkies. See, there's another thing. Uh, I'm going to take my four uh, realistic Radio Shack walkie-talkies from the 1980s, and I'm going to put batteries in them, and I'm going to hook them up and use them for my show so I can communicate with whoever I've got tapped to operate a camera, Right their microphones won't be on everything will be going through my audio mixer so i can get on and talk to somebody all right change angles and zoom in all right i'm, I'm going to cut to you in three two one cut to you and then boom i can get you know okay i'm done with that angle go find another camera angle why don't you step back and get one in the back of the crowd right and i think that's going to be fun to get people on board you know and all they, they don't have to talk all they got to do is listen to what i'm saying you know and then react so it's going to be it's going to be fucking cool you know somebody with a with a walkie-talkie strapped on maybe an earpiece you know and they're just kind of buzzing around listening to me and doing this and okay okay i'm not gonna go over and do that you know and then i'll switch off i'll have dave sitting in there and he'll do the mixer and i'll be out there with the camera you know and it'll just be fucking righteous you know It'll be it'll be just like when I was a little kid with the old man making videos for the university, you know, making little little school projects. I'm gonna be the shit. It's fucking so jazzed. Yeah. I think that calls for the, the second bong hit of the morning, right? My god, I've only done two bong hits. That's what I'm talking about, the speed weed, man. It's like it 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 kills the freaking pain, but it wakes me the fuck up. And that's that's what I'm really digging about it, you know. Um it doesn't it's not so much for my head, right? 
I don't just sit around and go, wow, man, this is some gay shit. Uh, it does a little of that, but it mostly kills the pain and amps me up and makes me want to do shit. I mean, by the time I get done with this stuff at eight o'clock here, I'm going to be sitting over there on the floor drilling holes and shit and taking shit apart and getting things painted and cutting shit, you know, because I'm just getting all pumped up, you know? Wow. So I got up this morning. It was 66 degrees outside. Last week, I got up in the morning and it was 33 degrees. Wow. What a huge difference in a week, right? It's going to be a warm one this summer. So, yeah, my wife and I are going to try like hell to get that evaporative cooler strapped on the back on the side of the house and uh, and get hooked up. I need to vent it, though. I need to do some duct work and have it come up and kind of spread throughout the whole house. Right. Um, and I don't want to cut holes in the roof because it's a mobile. That's what you have to do is is duct on the roof and then drop down. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just pump it in back into the side where it was before and then just duct it up and over and then put some vents on it. Right. And then just build it into a wall uh, so that I can hide it. Cause I've got to build a wall here above my, my big eighties cabinet. So I'll just build it up in there. Easy peasy. And then if we ever move, I can remove the cabinet and leave the duct work and stuff built up above the little nook. So, yeah. It's a, uh, I can't believe I've been gone for a week. It feels like forever, but uh, I'm back and it feels natural. So that's cool. I thought I was going to get on here and then just kind of go, well, I've been away for a while. I don't know what to say, man. I don't know what to do anymore. Oh, wow. Hi, people. <laughs> so yeah take that so I like this little microphone it's a USB microphone uh, it's really really uh, strong <laughs> uh, I'll have to change the try the different settings here let's set this one to this uh what's that one sound like that one a little bit better yeah that one doesn't get the whole room that one just gets me right that's cool yeah it doesn't get so much behind it, it gets more huh i like that one better <laughs> but we're just gonna go with this tonight we're gonna test and see what we get right because I need to now, man. I need to now. I'm gonna try the. Uh, I'm gonna try the Landers Giant Rock meeting room, um, Wi-Fi, and then see what kind of strength they have. If I were to plug in, I don't have the plug in. Uh, I'm gonna have to get the plug in unit mailed to me, and uh, mainly so that I can go from my uh, an Ethernet cable into a USB or USB-C, I need to get that adapter. Uh, and then I can run a cable from from cable modem to computer and cut out that Wi-Fi signal. Um, that'll that'll keep me from dropping out and having sound glitches and video glitches and shit. Um, this computer here at home goes Wi-Fi, but it's my modem. There's nobody awake. There's nobody using anything on this modem right now except for me. So it's a pretty good signal. Uh, there's them dogs again, new neighbor, um, bunch of dogs. She likes to put them out early and leave them out all day and bring them in late. I hope she doesn't do that over the summer. Cause I'll have to complain, uh, or, or at the, at the very least go over and help her to figure out some other solution. Uh, you know, a doggy doors and a, and a fence. So the dogs can let themselves in and out and not be tied up outside. Uh, cause it's, it's not the area that you can do that. In fact, uh, if, if ASPCA or the Humane Society of Animal Control were to come by and see a dog on a leash, you know, anywhere from, from May to September, 
they're gonna they're gonna take the dog away from you uh because we don't do leashed dogs out here in the desert we don't it's 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 illegal uh and it's cruel um no it, it should not be allowed and it's not and if and if it's like leaving your dog or kid in a car, hot car locked up no no you can't leave a dog out on a leash all day and all night uh in the heat you know it's it's literally torture uh i mean if it's torture for you to go outside imagine them if it's torture for you to walk out around outside barefoot imagine how painful it is for them you know to walk around this far off the ground and for the ground to be 150 degrees right no chihuahuas are not allowed to be on the ground in the summer any small dog because they're so close to the ground they just have a heat stroke right and i i would drive down the street in the middle of summer and see tourists walking their little dogs on the hot ground and i literally have to stop and yell out my window you cannot do that the ground is too hot if you put your hand on the ground and it's too hot for you imagine how hot it is for them pick your damn dog up and carry your dog all right what are you fucking stupid uh and yeah there's a lot of stupid people with pets and that's unfortunate and i'm i'm not sorry for saying that i feel sorry for the pets you know because i've got stupid owners who have no clue what the fuck you know, google how to fucking deal with a dog at least jeez you you know if you can google you know how to make a quiche well google how to fucking take care of a dog you know is how hot is too hot how hot is is too hot on the ground you know if you can put your the back of your hand on the asphalt and you don't go then it's okay right if you feel any kind of heat that makes you go ooh, then it's too hot for your dog you wouldn't let your baby walk around barefoot or sit down on the hot asphalt why would you let your dog that's cruel that's no so uh you know if, if i ever see that um i'll say something and if i have to continue to say something i'll report your ass right because that's <laughs> that's just not supposed to happen you know it's just not and i have no trouble i have no compunction at all letting the authorities know that there's a moron in our midst and they need to be taught how to bing bang pow okay i i really have trouble with ignorant people morons who just don't see the 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 need for intelligence right and more so those people who are raised to be idiots by idiots it's like idiots who should never have procreated in the first place how dare you tell people that they can't have kids you must play, you must be one of the morons right that have 12 moron kids you know we don't need that the world does not need more idiots the world does not need more people period we got enough people let's deal with the idiots and the people we have now and then work on having more people on this fucking planet you know let's stop having kids right now everybody just for like one year five years okay five years nobody on the planet has kids everybody stops waits and plans a few exceptions uh somebody's you know old and they're having a kid because this is they got pregnant and then they have to have a kid because this is their only opportunity they're dying they have cancer and they want to have a kid before they die right and they just got the go from their doctor yeah have a kid do it but i mean people are really irresponsible having children two children per couple is the perfect balanced amount for this planet anything more than that and it's sheer fucking greed we don't need any more of you people okay we don't we don't need more we don't need this family to be bigger than that fucking family and this family to now have three more kids so they're bigger than that fucking family we don't need that you know two kids that's all you should be fucking having is two fucking kids one for one that's it two kids per couple any more than that and it's fucking greed at this point there's not enough planet there's not enough food there's not enough clean water there's not enough clean air 
There's just not enough fucking resources. And all we're doing by pulling more resources out of the planet and creating more garbage to buy is just worsening the situation, right? We have so many more people now that we have to have GMOs just to be able to feed everybody. And there's still entire continents of people going fucking hungry. Look at how many people go hungry in this country. Look at the price of foods, how out of whack things are. You know, you can go buy a 99 cent, fill up a 99 cent cheeseburgers, right? But if you want to eat healthy, it's going to cost you 20 bucks for one meal to eat healthy, you know? If you want to eat organic and you want to eat fresh and you want to eat healthy and you don't want to eat processed garbage, it's going to cost you an arm and a fucking leg or you've got to grow it yourself. <laughs> what kind of world is that? Right. And then on top of that, we got people starving. We got food lines already. Right. My God, we got food lines. You know, how bad is it going to be in 20 years when we've got too many people to feed and just not enough resources to go around? What's, what's it going to be like then? You know, what's Earth Day going to look like in uh, 2050? You know, 2050, that's going to be 80 years after the first Earth Day, 1970, right? I mean, come on. You know, at, at, at this point, we're already uh what 70 we're already 50 years right 50 some 54 years past the first earth day and things have just gotten exponentially worse right everything just gets magnified on and then you know we've got the smartphone which should have put everybody on the same page and united the entire planet together for one goal and one purpose to save ourselves, right? And instead, we make memes over Greta Thunberg because she wants to do that. So we 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 crucify her on the internet because she has a dream of saving the planet, and all we can do is laugh at her. Oh, the human race makes me weep for the human race, right? I mean, I I'm just I'm just sad that you know people would rather look at big hair and big butts and big lips and big idiots and big muscles, you know, and big, stupid, out of budget, out of control budget fucking movies that mean nothing the next year. Right. And all this time and energy and money and and resources into creating all of this stuff that just mixed misdirects our our attention from what's really going on. Right. And everybody will scream up and down. Yeah, we love everybody and we want to take care of everything. And all they're doing is trying to fill their pockets by using these things, these ideals, these ideas to their benefit, not to the planet's benefit. You know, it, if. If we had gone after. The, the entire goal of Earth Day from day one, from year one, every year the planet would have been uh, and would have gotten increasingly better, nicer, less polluted. We should have had electric vehicles ru ruling the road, you know, ages ago, or take the, 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 the engines that they have now and then just create no emission internal combustion engine, right? Or engines that run on, hydrogen you know uh because the the engines the, the electrical cars that they're creating now well they're great cars but they're garbage as far as what they're doing to the planet you know the the, the amount of toxins that they gotta suck out of the ground mine out of the earth and then process and the processing creates all this toxic crap right and then once the life of the car is over and cars are only meant to last five or 10 years now, and then they're garbage or landfill. Uh, and then how do you, how do you dispose of all of that used up toxic garbage? You don't, 
you got to dump it back into the earth and in a thousand years it'll turn into something else or in a hundred years it'll poison the next generation right so yeah i mean uh, you know electric cars good electric cars bad it would have been better just to go after hydrogen or take internal combustion and create a version that's less harmful rather than create all of these millions of cars out on the road now these electric cars that are just so harmful to the planet before and after you know and how do most of these cars get charged anyway with fossil fuel burning uh generators right these big giant smokestacks that create energy that power most of the grid right and then you see these these tesla stations out in the middle of nowhere these charging stations and there's a charging station but then you look off to the side and there's this big giant gas tank and this big giant diesel generator smoking creating electricity to charge all of these little cars yay earth day right what did we do we didn't do a fucking thing we went backwards we got worse they kept pushing these these do well we're going to be emissions free by this day no we're going to go to this day no shh, remember shh. yeah right yeah like you know get ready for 6g right get ready for 6g and then all of a sudden what's that nobody talk about it right yeah look it up see what happened to that you won't find anything about it before it came and, and and then all of a sudden it was gone right around something right around the time something else happened right did one make the other happen did they uh use one to mask another uh-huh you tell me here well it's just getting to about eight o'clock and I'm going to be wrapping it up for the day and I'm going to go put on some jeans and some shoes and I'm going to start cleaning up my studio here and getting it ready for the final stages of dressing up this mobile live unit. Uh, this week, it should be finished, save a couple of little components that I'm working on. Uh, I need to get that back plug. So the power can come straight from an extension cord and just plug right into the back. Um, I'm waiting for the foam so I can pack my stuff up. And then I'm going to have to order a uh, a uh, an adapter for my Ethernet cable into the USB so that I can plug my live stuff in to a strong signal. And I think if I can do that out at Giant Rock and their signal is as at least as good as mine, we're home free, right? If I get a piggyback off of my phone, it's going to get spotty and glitchy. We're going to have sound drops and stuff. So I'm going to almost have to have an ex external hard drive recording stuff. Uh, and I'm not quite sure how that how that plays out. Um, yeah, because I haven't experimented with the uh, Internet access directly to my audio video mixer. And I haven't experimented with saving live to the audio video mixer uh so or from uh so it's uh the learning curve is going to be happening over the next couple of weeks with the uh introduction of season three in the mornings here and dabbling in the beginnings of uh, open mic well, i'm hoping that monday night open mic will lead to open mic at other various locations and i can be kind of become the traveling youtube live guy around the valley right i'm over here this night i'm over here this night i'm over here this day and then that night you know and then just keep bopping around and then do a couple of hours every morning during the week uh and if i can keep and keep up with creating more content if i can do all of that go Surely. But uh, yeah, I am about ready to uh, see what I'm going to get into for the day.
So thank you so, so much for stopping by today. Um, thank you so very much for everyone who helped out with seasons one and two uh, and are helping me usher in season three beginning Monday. Uh, like the caption says, this is only a recap of last season and then a kind of a preview of this upcoming season. So um, I'll be um, more vigilant in uh, posting shows and links to shows that are upcoming so that you'll know about it more in advance and you'll be able to plan for the different events. Okay. So yeah, stay in tune to see what's coming up. Um, Mornings with Crazy Old Weird Bearded Guy will be back Monday for season three. Uh, stop in tonight and every Monday night from now on to see what's going on live and tune in to watch my videos and to see what other days and nights I'm going to be going live. Uh, it seems that live uh, is where it's at for me. So I will see you again uh, tonight. So I'll talk to you then. All right, people. Thank you. Love you all, weirdos. Have a good one. Enjoy your day. And I will see you tonight. And then tomorrow, uh, I will not be here. I will be back Monday, 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 Monday. So see you tonight, people. Thank you so much for coming by. Love you all. Bye. Peace out.